Of the many ancient civilizations of the world, none can surpass the grand majesty of ancient China, one of the oldest and longest lasting civilizations in the history of the world, going back over 4,000 years. Troller Games is proud to announce our latest Mythos series project, the Codex Sinarum. The Codex Sinarum covers the might and profound wonders of prehistoric to medieval China, both historic and mythic for castles and crusades. With almost 200 mythical Chinese creatures and over 140 deities and heroes, the Codex Sinarum is filled with monsters, gods, warriors, and more on a level that will be truly legendary, told in a narrative true to Chinese history. It introduces the basics of Chinese martial arts and is complete with qi and the many legendary abilities associated with it. Ancient complex systems of sorcery, spellcraft, and fortune telling even enchanted charms are explored as well. Players can live out their characters' adventures in tales set in popular Chinese fantasy styles like wuxia and more, while within a pseudo-historical setting and brought to life by the castle keeper or game master. Researched and written by Brian Young, the wildly popular mythos series delves into the mythos of the ancient world, bringing hosts of gods and heroes legends and lore, and even the monsters and foes that plagued the peoples of ancient times to the stories that you create. The Codex Sinarum brings ancient China to your table. Join us and pledge today.
Trollord Games. Join the fray. Hello and welcome to Phoenix Iwaki. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And we are brought to you by the kind support of CZRPG, Phoenix Dice, Trollord Games and Nathrax 3D Minis. Look out for your chance to win in our fabulous giveaways. Check the session for today's giveaway. And, of course, you can get yourselves a lovely discount over on their homepages using the coupon codes that will pop up in chat. Do not miss this amazing stuff. CZRPG with their beautiful encounter design, maps, a fantastic Patreon for you to join. Phoenix Dice, their incredible, sustainably produced, recycled packaging and everything. The wonderful Click Lap Math Rocks, do check them out. Trollord Games with their incredible Castles and Crusades original system and lots of D&D content as well. And the beautiful 3D printed and beautifully painted, if you wish, minis of Nathrax 3D minis. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Please check them out and let them know that the Odyssey sent you. Now, let us also say a huge thank you to the wonderful people over at Sirenscape. Amazing music and sound effects for your games and just makes the whole experience a completely different level. Check them out, stuff for D&D, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, other game systems, board games, science fiction, fantasy, everything you need. Link in chat for your chance to get a free trial of this amazing product. Now, let's get into the session. To adventure! And whenever you are, and we're in the right places anyway. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to set the cameras, but completely <laughs> yeah. intentional. Luckily, in the right spots. Bjorn could be. Bjorn, can you shift your camera to your right? This right? No, other way, other way. Sorry, this right. Reversed. Yes, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, you have the chunkiest art. <laughs> so... He's a big boy. He is a big, big boy. Okay, so a massive, massive hello to. All of you lovely people, these lovely players, welcome back, Mirren. It's uh, fabulous to have you here again. Yes, Biddy. And non it's nice to be back. Non mummified. <laughs> Whoa, our male so viewership's going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine, like, uh, just imagine them like trying to mummify you in the temple last time and they're like, wait, she's already got no organs. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, she's already dead. <laughs> Someone beat us to it. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, welcome everybody. It's good to have you all over there in the chat as well. Um, we are getting things rolling there. A big thank you to all those lovely folks in the pre-roll there. And another big special thank you to the fabulous CZRPG who has sponsored our giveaway this week. Their fantastic new product, the Brotherhood of the Griffin. A 30-page tier 2 adventure. New creatures, six maps. Get it while it's hot. Exclamation mark enter in chat for your chance to win this fabulous, fabulous prize. Now, we are rolling into a end of week just slew of endings and movings on and things. Today we are going to finish up our Harakir arc of Barovia and beyond and return to Barovia. Then, tomorrow... They will be finishing up in the second area of Prismere in Wild Beyond the Witchlights before moving on to the third and final hag-controlled region there. And then on Saturday, it is the grand finale, the last ever episode of The High Seas, our Radiant Citadel um, Spelljammer crossover. So, all sorts of fun things and storylines being closed out, so I'm happy that you are here to join us, everybody. And we... Are going to get things rolling. Hey, Femio, how are you doing? What time is it for you? <laughs> Very late for you. Um, welcome in, everybody. Um, good to see Seb in there as well. Phantom, my friend. Hello, hello. Um, Baron was there before I saw. Hello, Baron. And welcome in, everyone. It's good to have you all. Um, now, without further ado, let's say a quick hi hello to the wonderful Emma, who did this beautiful character art for us. Do check them out on Twitter, and you can enjoy them here on the channel for Chisenta's Tyranny tomorrow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Pamela. Yeah, I'm, I'm the wrong end of the day. Sorry, I'm getting my, getting my uh, time zones mixed up. <laughs> Just Europe we're, in general. <laughs> we're heading in 
Yeah, what would I know about Europe? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. We had a little, we had a little European kind of uh, vibe going on on Sunday. I went, took my kids to the park, and there was randomly an Italian guy and a German guy there with their kids. Aww, <laughs> like, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> they all walk into a bar and has the rest of the joker. <laughs> um, one of my students' fathers came over, turned up as well, and he came over. He's like, "What's going on? It's like little little Europe here." What's Is there a on? convention that we missed? We have Europeans in Milwaukee. <laughs> it's mind blowing. I think you've had all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. all the Europeans. <laughs> so yes, um, welcome in everyone as we get things going here. Let us catch up on what has been happening here in Harakir as last time, Edgar and Bjorn teamed up with the forces of the local Magi, the guardians of the old faith, the old gods that had been driven down and into in, um, obs obscurity? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. By the evil undying king Agdebot and his imagined new pantheon. And, oh, is that a Troll Lord Games we see? Hello, Trolls are to you, my friends. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing very, very well. Um, yes, indeed. They came um, storming out of the missing monuments there, having discovered a hidden chamber, a hidden burial chamber, which contained the undead, the still alive, alive is the wrong word, still, the still moving and kicking um, body, uh, bodily remains of Sahotep on Ra, the old head priest of Anubis which had been taken over and turned into Usa's pyramid there in the southern mountains. A location that Esmeralda had seen to be taken as after she was whisked away by the strange sandstorm-like magics of the beasts that attacked the missing monuments, having followed Bjorn and Karin Esmeralda there from the main desert. And as they travelled south to Usa's pyramids to reclaim it for the old gods reclaim it in anubis's name they battled through the traps and the beasties and the minions and the head priests of the new um jumped up religion and were able to beat them back and reinstate sahotep on ra as his rightful um head priest role and in the process they got themselves some nice shiny objects too Bjorn has some interesting new armor. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you find that okay? That's in your that's in your character sheet, right? Uh yeah, I think I added it last time. Yes. I'm so curious. <laughs> I'm now even hotter than usual, Lincoln. Are yeah. you on fire? <laughs> yeah. I have the ability to uh, explode. <laughs> when I really? land from a great height. When I land from a great height. Yeah, Can you auto explode and reassemble your items after the explosion happens? If he falls, no, 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 I just like a one-time thing. Wave. Yeah, yeah. If he falls on, okay. enemies, <laughs> if he falls on enemies, if he falls on enemies, he tucks his knees in, slams into the ground like a meteor because the the, the armor is made of meteoric rock, and he oh, slams wow. into the ground like a meteor. Takes half the damage he would usually, but deals that in fire damage to everyone around him. <laughs> okay, do I have Wind Guardian Leviosa or the equivalent is a spell? Because not, I need to get it. <laughs> I have uh, Misty Step, which is, you know, good enough to take me okay. pretty high. Oh, nice. All right, good stuff. <laughs> that's, oh, that's amazing. Just Misty Step and then just fall down. <laughs> yes. Yes. Excellent. Fastball Express, indeed. Fastball Special. Fastball Special, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Who nice. is my Hulk, though? Like, the, if I'm getting my references right, Fastball Special is when Hulk throws Wolverine, is that right? I'm not sure. I've only heard it in other TTRPGs. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. Okay. So, yes. Um, that is where we left things. And as we finished last time, the other members of the Magi and their various um, hangers-on um, came traveling up from the missing monuments with Sahotep at their lead and an excited Isaret, the Bastati um, scholar in charge of cataloging and looking after all of the scrolls of the old religions as they had found something that seemed to be related to you interested people a an accounting of a strange foreigner one with pale skin who shunned the sunlight of the desert and was skulking around the area and it made reference to the bent pyramid where you have heard that the spirit of the Lady of the Forest Thane is imprisoned, and it told how to open the pyramid. And that 
is where we rejoin our adventurers in this week's Barovia and beyond. Woo! So, let us meet these fine people going across the overlay. Edgar, who are you? Who are you playing? And where are they at? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mason, and I am Edgar Phelan, the sport food in the park. Uh, and currently, he's excited. Uh, right now, it's like he has a new key to an old door, so he's excited to see what's behind yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, said door. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. And the first real clue, the first the concrete um, step towards rescuing the archfey goddesses of your religion, the ladies of the fanes of Barovia. Okay, moving across beyond Hadborn. Hello, uh, I'm Shez, Shez Lens in the chat and all socials. Uh, Bjorn is, um, he's tired of the sandy place, you know, with all that, like, you know, sand gets everywhere and it's terrible, of course. He's just to be, you know, he said as soon as they walked into this place, they heard about the old, uh, about the new king. He said, you know, we're probably going to have to kill that thing. He can't wait to kill that king and say, I told you so to everybody. He's, he's just like to be, you know, go back home and, you know, move on to the, eventually the mountain thing, the lady of the mountain thing. But you know, this is just another day in the life of an adventurer. <laughs> that he's like, he's like only been an adventurer for like five minutes. He's like, whatever, man. This is just a day. <laughs> also, it is worth noting he is the only one who has talked about you guys confronting the Undying King. Now, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Didn't someone tell us that we have to like defeat the Undying King? No. <laughs> no? Oh. No. Just ever since you've ever since you've arrived, you've been very excited about doing that. But, so. I'm pretty sure we're going to look when a place has an undying king, you kind of have to force him to die. Challenge. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We, we, are, we are focusing on Barovia and dipping into other domains of dread to retrieve the ladies of the faints. Not <laughs> We're not taking on the major storyline in every domain of dread. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> we'll leave that for a different party of Unless... Phoenix Iwaki people. <laughs> yes, we can, we can revisit Takir and, we'll, and play as Magi and uh, jump in on that. So that'll be a good time. Oh, that'd be cool as hell. <laughs> what are the PCs level, everyone? What are your levels? I Chunky. believe I'm 11. 11. 11. 11 yes. Paladin, baby. Yeah, Seb, these, these are some of our highest level adventurers on the channel. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good desert? Indeed. indeed. Most Jedi. <laughs> True. One particular Jedi. Was anyway. <laughs> Killing undying kings. Those tasks do fit a paladin. Indeed. Oh. <laughs> indeed. Okay. Now, although you can't call, you can't accuse him of being anti undead or that kind of thing with with uh, Esmeralda. Over to you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. This must be why she's not are, are such good friends because I'm already dead. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> like my soul. <laughs> like Michael. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, my name is Naren. I play as Melda Devonir, the blade singing Vistani Battlemaster, who is also reborn because she died a while ago. We're, we're mostly over at this point. We still have some trauma. Um, how are we doing? We're not mummified, right. as I understand it. I'm not really sure what, how else we're doing because I've been out for a few weeks um, answering the call of the theater. Um, <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what's going on. But hey, you didn't Revolutionary die. songs. <laughs> I didn't have done that. Well, that's good because Esmeralda doesn't know either. So, makes oh great! I don't know what's going on, guys. I'm sure it's fine. It always is. Uh -huh. We saved you. Don't worry about it. Es Esmeralda has not been witness to anything that you missed as a player, so it makes sense. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Right, so let us return to the foothills of um i forget do these mountain range does this mountain range have a name i forget um the oh you go the sun's throne mountains over in the east is where our undying king resides but we are over here tucked away at usa's pyramid although it will come under the focus of the powers that be here very soon as they are very aware of what has happened in this usurping of what they consider to be the true god um, of this pyramid. Now, let us return to Harakir. 
So, it's red. Hang on, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Second. Not the battle one. <laughs> Not the battle one. <laughs> you already did them, Femi, or... Um, was on the yep, stage. they came last week. Yes. Yep, last Thursday, Friday. Yeah. They went super well. Limits. Legs, legs have been broken. I heard okay. it was Le Miserable. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's several Miserables. Sorry, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's just Grim, Grim's in chat, and he's, he's, he's got some awful, awful puns. I don't want you to encourage him. Okay. <laughs> no, never, no, please. Never, never let the streams cross. <laughs> he's safely tucked away and out of the abyss and uh, hunger of Aetherim. Okay, so... <laughs> so as we jump back here um so yes we return like in that moment okay so esmeralda you're kind of like looking around you um you see the magi and all of the others that you had uh, briefly seen down at the missing monuments but you were immediately thrown into that combat and then whisked away by those sandstorm right. creatures um and you see a, a very large group of them coming up from the missing monuments with this ah. very extravagant head priest figure at the start, at the first at the head of them, as uh, Sahotep strides forward. He's like, "Yes, yes, at the last. Oh, good gods! What have they done with the place? Look at it! It is falling to pieces. We must restore it. All of the grandeur of the temple complex is gone." And he gestures behind him. And Esmeralda, you see that leading from the pyramid down to where the missing monuments must be away across towards the desert in the kind of lost in the heat shimmer. Um, you can see the kind of rib cages and backbones of broken buildings and, you know, like the corners of walls just sticking up in almost like a procession leading off into the desert as there was a large temple complex um, and collection of sub shrines and um, you know, ac accommodations and um, other um, trading houses and things that were connected to the main pyramid once leading all the way to the missing monuments but now they are dead and gone destroyed and gone now he he strides past you and, and, with it and he says you have done good work here now we must restore and prepare for the coming storm. And he strides within. And the um, our friends from last time, um, Evan and uh, Josh's characters go with him. Um, Evan's character, who was oh, the no, uh, was... Evan's character, who was the um, priest of um, of Anubis, um, proffers up the ceremonial headdress that you recovered from the main chamber there. <laughs> and uh, Sahotep says, "Ah, yes, with this." I can tap once more into the true power. And he starts to don that as he ducks through the door and into the main building. He's like, ah, you triggered all the traps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we have to get in. <laughs> Maybe we didn't have to. <laughs> Made it safe for you. <laughs> they were, um, Esmeralda, there were two ways around to the left and right, and they, they went through every trap. <laughs> One of the ways did have, didn't have any traps. <laughs> Brave. Brave. <laughs> yeah, it was a bold move. It was a bold move. Um, okay. Now, as I said, um, Iseret, the um, little Bastetti um, friend of yours. Um, hang on, let me find that art again, because it's cool. Uh, where is she? Da, 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 da. Here she is. Okay, so yes. Um, ah, she's so cute. Isret comes running over and she's like, Edgar, Bjorn, and... Hello? Who, who are you? Is there a friend who, did, who definitely did not die? There's a lot of that around these parts. Be Probably the reason why it's so comfortable here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a name, it's Esmeralda. <laughs> a beautiful name for a stunning creature. Um, uh, Bjorn, Edgar, I, I, I fancy. Air flip, glisten, glisten. <laughs> I didn't need Edgar. I didn't need Edgar. I didn't need Edgar to be like, what are we watching right now? Oh my god. <laughs> Pale, glowing eyeballs, not creepy at all. <laughs> and, um,. And she she brandishes this um, not so not so ancient scroll compared to some of the others that were restored from that. Um, actually, you know, 
I, I wonder, I wonder how long has Strad been in charge of Barovia? How long ago was it that he deposed the ladies Ooh. of the Thanes? I think it's probably a few centuries at least, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say probably in like at least two, three hundred years. Mm -hmm. It's like my entire family's life work. It's like we've never even known a, an era where the, the ladies of the veins were like actually in charge. We've just like been following this like wild goose chase. Hopefully, it works out in the end when we do actually have it happen, right? You don't know what'll happen. Beyond, beyond. Probably it's better. It's called faith. It's called faith. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually. The first Hardbjorn to actually meet one of their gods. It's wild. It's going to be... I mean, you've, you've met the physical remnants in uh, in <laughs> Madame Ava. Um, just need to re reattach the, uh, the, the spirit. <laughs> he is I can't ancient. wait to make my god a god again. He is the land. <laughs> Indeed. Grim, don't, don't make me bust out the chant. I'll bust out the chant. <laughs> I have it. It's in Death House. <laughs> Very quickly to, quickly, quick to find. Um, okay. Um, so, yes... Um, Strad came here at his creation of Barovia and, and his taking over of the land there um, as... <laughs> okay. Challenge accepted. <laughs> 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 da, 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 da. How quick can I do this? Da, da, da. Everyone, um, do check out the fabulous Sirenscape for cool sound effects and music in your games. You can add your own um, stuff to their playlist as well as well. If you want to add some of your own flavour to these things. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. And um, da, 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 lots of da, da. searchable memories and uh, memories. Sorry, mem um, <laughs> lots of searchable. <laughs> Search my memories. Menus. Welcome to the pens here. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and you can quickly find um, just the thing that you're looking for, such as to create beautiful memories. The official Dungeons and Dragons Curse of Strahd's sound set for Death House, Part Two. <laughs> Sounds like the name of a band. <laughs> Um, and let's see. There we go. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Stop timer. <laughs> How fast was that? <laughs> you just hear this starting to ring in your ears. <laughs> Guys, I think some cult shit is happening around here. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Yeah, because this is the uh, this is the priests of Anubis <laughs> re reconsecrating the temple. <laughs> um. So. As you, um, yes, as you talk with um, Isaret there, so she, yeah, she runs over, brandishing this fairly ancient scroll. And she says what she said last time. So she, you know, talks of this figure, which definitely sounds like Strad to you and Edgar and Bjorn Esmeralda. And um, talks of the Bent Pyramid and how to enter. So now we have to go there, which is... Oh, Very my. far from where we are right now. Yes, we have to tread so far. I'm not sure how ready I am for that. What time day is it? Is it like... Are it's... we happy up, are we? Edgar, you are? I'm at like 70%. Not bad, but like, you know, could be worse, could be better. And I am doing... Fine, I just am not excited to walk so far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ez is more wounded than she's been in about six months. Didn't we heal you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm at 56 HP at the moment. I cast like a restore on you, didn't I? That doesn't heal. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, okay. You need like a long rest or something. Mm. Okay. And, um,. Isaret says, um, well, I'll wager that uh, you found your key already. Did we? And she wraps a paw on your chest, Bjorn. This is the key to the. This sick the armor, armor is the key to the bent pyramid? It. <laughs> the key you in the keyhole. <laughs> 
it talks <laughs> of opening like with like, and unless I'm very much mistaken, the bent pyramid and your armor are of, of the same material. Oh, they're both that... made of space rock. Space? Wow. What is space? Uh, it's above the sky. Isn't it just more mist? I thought the mist was in every direction. They don't have stars up here? Uh, yeah, it's mist rock. That's that's what I meant. <laughs> it's rock from mists. <laughs> I see. From one of the other areas? A, a, a place like you came from? Who could car- be. Who carried it? Don't it must have been very... Be. The, the bent pyramid is made from a solid piece. It must have been impossible to transport. That's some thick-ass mist, my guy. <laughs> um, she, okay, we should get going. Yeah, she's, totally. She's like, I suppose we do have the technology and the ways to make our own pyramids. Um, impossibly sized rocks up to elevations that could not usually be achieved not, by people of the me, time but and then we we cut, the bed, we, we cut the away bed. as she aliens. explains how the pyramids were created was it aliens <laughs> <laughs> um, she explains the history of Space hebrew slaves bears. jesus oh man wrong wrong parts of dnd um join us with your center tomorrow which was which was built by slaves brought from Earth, <laughs> Egypt, and Greece. Oh, wow. <laughs> the pyramid's more likely built by seasonal laborers, as I recall, which makes it less terrible. True. Now, you... I, I have heard that before about the laborers, by the way. I think that is actually more factual than any other account that we have for that. <laughs> you are able to stay um, a, a large encampment is springing up around the entrance to um, the pyramid there. Oh, oh but, but actually, what time of day is it? It's getting in towards evening. Like, I imagine we don't want to travel in the dead of night, because it gets pretty cold, right? Huh. Yes, of course. In my... And pretty dark, too. Yep. Yeah, we can't navigate these treacherous sands if it's too dark. We should just like camp out with everyone else and then head out the first light, maybe. Yeah, sure. It'll still be cool by that point. Yeah. Um, so, your like new friend, fair. your new friend, the Magi um, spy and scout Kahiri, um, comes over. And he's like, Ah, oh, my friends. Um, I think you should. Um, you should rest, but do not dally too long. This whole area will become a war zone before too long. I'm sorry? Oh. Oh. Yes, it, uh, there will be a big battle to be expected, Esmeralda. Uh, we just, we just took one of them. What did you do? We just <laughs> took one of the major seats of their religion. Oh yeah, like we like overthrew a guy and now this is like old religion again. That, that's like... Crazy. That, that was integral to saving you, you know, like pre- preventing your you being sacrificed to the new gods. Hmm, I mean, that I, was, I certainly appreciate it. That was a nice. This was a nice bonus, I suppose. Hey, two birds, one stone, right? As long as the battle goes well. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Ah. Do you need us to be here for the battle, or do we leave that up do to you, you? Do you mean two ibis, one slingshot? <laughs> it's a similar thing, I think. Yeah, that's definitely what I meant. Uh, two dragons, one fireball, yeah. <laughs> I hope they're not the red ones. No, I'm... <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> so I can't do Josh's humor. GM Josh's humor. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Stop trying. Just um... say exactly what the GM is saying. <laughs> so, um, you... But yes, um, so he, um, he goes on. He's like, um, yes, the uh, Angtipot will be uh, raising all of his legions to rise up and we have sent messengers to the city uh, hopefully the um, followers of our our brothers and sisters the followers of Horus um, I believe you called them the um, keepers of the feather oh oh 
And because you remember, you oh. heard Craig, Craig had discovered that the followers of Horus in the main city were connected to the keepers of the feather in Barovia. Yes. As in, like, they know each other? Yes. Or. Yes, they are. The they are another of the groups of uh, Mistwalkers. Ooh. Mm. Um, and, yeah. Probably something that would have been found out much more about in Curse of Strad had they not killed. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Fair, uh, not the fault of anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter of the family. Um, and um, he says, um, "Yes, so hopefully with a uh, coordinated uprising, both in the main city and with us in this defensible position here. And once Sahotep has uh, communed throughout the night, he will have access to more power as well, and then." I guess we shall see how it goes. <laughs> and now, because because we want the chance for other, we, but the problem is we want the chance for other adventurers to be able to come and play here in Harakir, so um, it's doomed to fail. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell him that. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know what? Just like wake us up like an hour before all of that, so we can get like a head start on getting to our thing. But good luck with that, man. Yes, I I recommend. Um, and he kind of starts scratching. Um, with his claw, because you know, he's a Bastetti as well. He starts scratching with his claw in the sand, and he's like, you should um, follow, um, stay out of sight, um, starting from uh, Neb's vein here. And he gestures over to the side, and you can see the deep gash mm. in the mountainside that leads down into a river valley. That Is that the one on curls, the map that's like goes to the Red Oasis? Oasis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah this, this, and he like traces out the rough line of it with his claw, this is the um, Eternal River. It leads directly to Mahar, to the city of Mahar. And if Angtipot is raising his armies of the dead and engaging the vicious storms in the Sands of Soot, then this will keep you out of sight and hopefully out of danger. Ooh. But do not drink of the Red Oasis, it is poison. Good it. <laughs> oh, and stalked by many lions. So go through the oasis or avoid it altogether. I would just go around the banks. Okay. It does not feel the. It does not feel the chasm. Okay, sounds good. We'll avoid any lions. And yes, if you travel back to the city, then some of our friends with the uh, um, keepers of the feather. He's just trying to use the your Aww, term, familiar term. Look at you. The, um, some of the keepers of the feather will um, guide you. It's <laughs> Shivakri for a moment there as well. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to not be like kitties everywhere. I must scratch you. <laughs> um, some of the uh, some of the faithful of Horus, um, the keepers of the feather, will will um, escort you to the bent pyramid. It is um, it is thought and uh, hypothesized that uh, if you uh, rescue this powerful entity some of Anctipot's power will also be depleted it is thought that um, their presence within the bent pyramid is uh, being channeled and the energy is being siphoned through the shape of the pyramid and is helping to power the undying king and his tyranny of this land Sounds like something worth disrupting. Indeed. Yeah, of course. Well, we and gotta go there anyway. It is thanks yeah, to you, my friends. And actually, he brings out he brings out like a gourd of like of um, like uh, date wine, and um, like Ooh. these small little glass cups. And he's like, pause, well, pause that for everybody. It is thanks to you that the uh, the boulder is rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have snow? Do you ever heard about snow? What? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's <laughs> no big deal. Understood. <laughs> anyway, let's have some of this wine on this date. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> date wine. Thank you, my friends. It's almost as good as post date wine. Of course. Cheers and... to the war we caused. <laughs> to the war! <laughs> <laughs> to the war! <laughs> <laughs> A few, a few date wines in. <laughs> a 
few day ones and Bjorn is like, look, I guess that we might not get a chance to the king here. But hey, we caused the war, so someone might kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. The villain's problem are. now. So, yeah. We did the in setup. A way, in a way, you led to its death. Yeah, yeah, but I just, you know, couldn't see the life leave his eyes through my gaping sockets, so you know, what's the big... <laughs> <laughs> if you can't see death through gaping sockets, what's even the point? I know, what's the point of having the sockets? <laughs> and as those <laughs> empty sockets stare up at Let's the night them. sky <laughs> asleep, <laughs> perhaps... Oh god, that's true, when you sleep they don't close. <laughs> no, I mean, I have eyelids. Do you have eyelids? Yeah. Do you? It's just the eyeball is missing. Do you? Yeah. You just okay. look into that's, my that's eyes so and you see my brain. <laughs> <laughs> or you just see darkness. I don't know how, like, is it magical or is it just literally empty? I don't know how exactly it works. Uh, I mean, there's stuff between your brain and your eyeballs usually, but perhaps <laughs> your case is different. <laughs> um, <laughs> just the cords that connect to the brain. Let's say for our own sake. There, it is a uh, magical inky darkness. <laughs> okay, so it's a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Someone get my avatar under MS Paint and then just like, so like just paint bucket the white black. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Easily doable. It's easily doable. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel bad for you like, ruining Emma's amazing art, though. <laughs> you have like your sunglasses on at that point. I love it. Oh, I, I think I already do have those, like, you know, like those yeah. avatar um, eclipse visors, right? Yeah. 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 So, you may all take the benefits of a long rest. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> Do you want to change up any of my spells? And as the next day dawns, there is a hustle and bustle around the camp as the forces of Ankhdipot have been seen out in the desert by the roving scouts and outlying agents of the Magi. And people are moving around and preparing as quick as they can, ushering the um, defenseless and non-combatants into the pyramid, into its uh, deeper regions and the safety therein. And we leave. Yeah, and um, <laughs> Kathiri, Kathiri comes over to you guys again. He's like, this is the time, my friends. Oh, uh, Anub the speed of Anubis okay. may he may he guide you through through the desert safely to your goal. I've seen it in your heart. There's no way you can lose. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> and um, he escorts you to the um, rocky, craggy kind of climb down into the river valley there. And you start to make your way along its depths as the sun. Luckily, this early in the morning is still low enough that the bottom of the river gully is in shadow. And you have a, a relatively comfortable start to your journey. And you start uh, making pace. Now, Bjorn, do you summon your sand horse? Because Edgar and Esmeralda are, oh. gi are given a sand horses as well. Uh. <laughs> I would ride a horse. Could I not be given a sand horse, or should I summon one? They know you have one, so they'd rather not summon okay, yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I'll use a second level spell slot and summon my sand horse. <laughs> Isashi booty sand horse. Hey, hey it's you. Right, he's doing. <laughs> Still alive and kicking? Mine doesn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Mine only talks telepathically. <laughs> we somehow. Oh. I, I don't know how we did it without you, but we somehow made it this far. <laughs> well, I'm here now. <laughs> Great. Let's avoid some lions. We all lions? Eventually very <laughs> what? <laughs> I said we're going to avoid the lions. Leaves. <laughs> no, send horse, get back here. I magically summoned you. <laughs> and, yes, you. Set off at a, a light gallop down, and you know, you have to be relatively careful of the slightly broken and uh, broken up um, floor. And it, it's not like you know, it's not like on the map where it's just a single like gully. Um, it is there are lots of columns of rock and stuff in the uh, the gully there, and you're just like, weaving between them. Um, and before too long, um, it does start to open out um, towards um, the side, either side, 
and in the large basin you see below you, just as the sun rises up over the edge of the cliffs above, you see the glistening and shimmering waters of the Red Oasis. And see why, uh, as the sun reflects off the blood-red rocks that line the basin here. Um, you can see where it gets its name. It looks like you know regular sandstone, like at sunset, right? Because that like airs rock it changes that amazing color. Sorry, Uluru, excuse me. Um, mm-hmm. And um, you, yeah, you arrive there. How do you want to proceed, having heard you know, warnings about this place? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bjorn's like, oh, thank God! And starts like, goes down to his knees and starts drinking. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Wait, so we so we've arrived at the oasis. Yes, we know it to be poison. Like, um, I guess we just. I guess we just leave. Do we like? Jesus. What time is it? <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah. If you want to make it towards the city by night, you need to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, just let's keep moving. To... Let's do our best to avoid. Uh, go, horsey, uh, go. Lions. Lion. Should we do like perception or invest? Uh, I'm out of character now. Should is we it do, like, a survival a perce- or? Yeah, yeah. A survival <laughs> perception or. I think Edgar, with his passive perception so high, notices um, as you're kind of traveling along. There's the. There's the shadow because you're trying to keep like as close to the cliff as possible, stay out of the sun's um, you know heat. And Edgar, you notice where the edge of the shadow is of the cliff face. There are like movements. There's movements over the shadows on the top. And like Bjorn's like, is that my shadow again? <laughs> and um, and um, but yes, you Edgar, you you notice them and you and you look up and you do see several scrawny, ragged evil looking lions prowling along the lip of the cliffs above. Uh, Bjorn, so besides we heard of all earlier, uh, they are near and it is best we tread carefully around. Can we go, yeah, like make a huge live berth around them? Because, you know, if they're sticking to the shadows, maybe they just won't come out of the shadows, so we'll just, you know, maybe avoid maybe their eye Maybe they the sunlight. Yeah, that could be it. Let's just... We'll sweat a little bit so we don't have to fight lions. Edgar, um, something moving catches your eye back towards the southeast corner where you entered into this basin, and you do see several shapes moving down at your level as well. Ah! Uh... There could be some ground level as well, mayhap, though we may, may have to do this a little bit quicker. Uh. Um, yes, you you stir on your uh, your sand horses, and um, Bjorn, your psychic connection with yours allows um, a, a sure-footed and, and uh, sh- um, you know, safe way forward, but Edgar and Esmeralda, could you make animal handling checks for us? Sure. Everyone follow me, my sand horse That's... psychically knows what to do. One of the, like, five skills I don't have proficiency in. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have it in five? Wow. Uh, six. Seven. Sorry, everything else I'm proficient in. I am a Here's skill monkey. I got 12. Okay. I got 14. Heck yeah. Okay, both of you don't do too bad. Yay. Above average. Um, and, I mean, you're not you're not galloping full speed, but you are moving pretty fast um, through the basin here. And seeing that you pick up the pace, um, Edgar, you see the lions in the back do um, starts to lope forward faster, and they are quickly fanning out round either side of the red oasis as you're galloping towards that northeast exit towards the northern passage um, and uh, the uh, escape routes there. Um, as you're thundering along over the rocks and the dust is kind of like coming up from the sand horse's hooves. Um, you can see the shadows Bjorn Esmeralda you see it now even with your lower perception is there not being as stealthy as they were before some of them are jumping down on the rocks and the ledges from the from the ledge up from the uh, ca- cavern uh, sorry the um, uh, cliff face up above and they are converging and coming in behind you and you urge your um, Santos is on even faster and as you're galloping round Edgar as you start to make it around that northern edge of the oasis and towards the exit, you can see the gap in the rocks that leads out towards the, the riverbed ahead and um, your way forward. And as you're urging the camels on, um, you look back to check and you see the lions 
peeling off and scattering. Oh. Okay. Well then. Looks we like we are fine now. Can, can That's just something that they're trying to avoid. Yeah, can we do perception? Giant sand were a perception check, please. <laughs> I don't like when lions are afraid of something. And it's like, oh, they left. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> You're... For a guy whose Hi, passive yeah. perception is pretty high, you're being a little anti-perceptive right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, John, can we do um, perception checks? Um, please do. Idoki. Although, it's not entirely necessary. Okay. Well, I got a seven, so I didn't see anything anyway. <laughs> I got a nat one. I okay. fall off my horse and get a face full of sand. No, both of Everything you... seems fine, you guys. <laughs> Both Get of you back are... in their horse, man. <laughs> both, of you are focusing t- both of you are focusing too hard on controlling the sand horses, right? And and um, and uh, galloping forward. But um, as you do, even the two of you, okay, you you um, notice it first: a rumbling in the stone, and the surface of the red oasis is Uh-oh. jumping and jumping? becoming choppy, and splashing up, and rising, and as the three of you gallop in to the northern river bed. The waters of the Red Oasis surge up and rise into a wall of water. And out of that wall of water, stretching as if through a membrane, you see faces of jackals and snakes and hawks. Oh, that's weird. I love it. And in the middle, the gaunt, sallow-cheeked face of Anctipot himself as his mouth opens wide in this colossal 30 foot high wall of water at the head, the face almost as tall as the water itself and this water is surging behind you we, my friends, are entering into a chase sequence a chase between (laughs) you and an eldritch wall of water (laughs) <laughs> All right, let's do this. As Does the wall water take damage? As represented by this map. <laughs> Yay. Uh-huh, okay, we'll so, <laughs> the wall of water today is being played by a stretched out water elemental. <laughs> it does have a spooky face. <laughs> hey, <Death-o's> spooky face. <laughs> and, and also, yes, um, can we just take a moment to see how scary these camels are? Look at these oh my god. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I I think we just only turn our camels around and face the water, and they just run away. <laughs> These <laughs> evil-looking bastards. <laughs> camels are feel much safer. They are guys. weird. They are very weird. Okay, so my friends, this is a chase. You are a hundred feet ahead of the wall of water as it charges towards you. You know, um, we've all seen the mummy, right? Mm-hmm. This, yeah. is my, this is my yeah. uh, two? Mummy two, I guess, actually, isn't it? It's the mummy two, right, with the uh, the, the sandstorm with his face in it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, there is um, you guys and the um, the water. And um, the, the map here has been um, scaled appropriately. Um, so you are 100 feet ahead at the moment. Oh, wow, okay. On the map. <laughs> um, okay. And um, you need to out race this and travel far enough away from the Red Oasis that the connection is severed with the magics of Anctipod and the waters return to their basin in the south. Now, as you're charging between these rock pillars and this broken sandstone of the floor here, we are going to enter a rather interesting um, set of chase rules that I have found recently. Ooh, this is um, like fun. Yeah, they're cool. They're really cool. Um, so, um, each turn in the chase, you can bid to see who goes first. You or the Anctipod's oh, wall of water. Um, there is a set DC for the challenge, the difficulty challenge. That they, There'll be a group check. You can use what, whatever skill you like. You can use each skill only once um, in the, in the, in the uh, whole chase. The chase will be three rounds, one round for each of you. And... Um, you will make a group check to see if you can pass. If you pass, you can pull ahead. But they could also pass, which means they would close the gap as well. 
and then you roll a d10 per um, 10 feet of movement. Um, your okay. camels, your camels have 50 feet of movement, so we'll roll five. You would you would pull ahead 5d10 if you succeed, and they will close the gap 5d10 if they um, succeed. And then there'll be a complication, which one of you will roll each turn. And <laughs> the way the way that this is broken up, and you're kind of weaving it out of these rock columns, and um, there's all sorts of things that happen. You could come across other things in the chasm here. Um, there could be natural obstacles or things. Um, the way that the terrain is all broken up and like this the other water could sluice around you could actually come like next to each other at some points before pulling back ahead again and there's there's all sorts of things um in this um so you um will start let's say the um the starting dc for this first round is 12 now what you're rolling um would it's a it's a it's one of your skills something you're proficient in that you could you could use uh, in this situation. So to justify them? Yes. How sentient is the water? Um, it seems, yeah, it seems to be completely magical and, yeah, completely unnatural. So. Okay. But if you, if you do something that takes your action, like use casting a spell or attack or something like that, that you will move, you will move half as much as everyone else. Because you're not dashing. Okay. Okay. A... Can I justify rolling athletics? Because I'm so athletically riding my steed. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can also start carrying your horse. <laughs> Faster that Whoa, way. Whoa, he knows how to ride a horse. He's a he's athletic. <laughs> I think, I mean, that would represent you being able to hold on to the um, sand horse as it is going faster. So, yes. Sweet. Um, okay, so in this first round, so the, the, the DC is 12 at the moment. Do you want to bid... Anything higher to see if you can go first? Um, How's bidding work exactly? Bid, I guess. Like if you if you if you raise the DC of the skill check by one. Oh, okay. Then I could I could also bid one as well, and then I'll be rolling a higher one as, and then whoever bids the highest DC on the skill check will go first. I see. So at the moment, when you're 100 feet apart, it's not so much of a big deal. But later, when if you if it's like down to the last round and you're only like 50 yeah. right. 50 feet apart, okay. then it's worth it, yeah. <laughs> I'm good for now, I think. Okay. Oh, bid to go first. Do I just? You get like, I mean, it, ra it raises it for the group. It's the, it's the DC for the group. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, I can either just roll to go first or bid to go first. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to definitely go first, then you need to raise the bid by one to okay. to make the, the skill check thirteen DC thirteen instead of twelve as it is now. Okay, well, I could probably beat a DC 12, though, with, ath with athletics. Okay. okay but so but Edgar, Edgar and Esmeralda also have to roll against that DC. Oh, okay, okay. So do you guys want to go first? We should we should go before the water, Ness. <laughs> and for now, it's not such a big deal. Yeah, this, yeah. this is a cool chase thing. I, I found it. I found it this week, um, Seb. I'm gonna. I'll put it in the D and D chat on the on the Discord. I'll link to the Reddit article about it. It's yeah, really I'm really cool. excited about this. Um, I tried it out. I tried it out the other day, so it's, it's good. It's good. Okay. Um, so yeah, are you are you are you bidding? Are you going to raise the DC to thirteen? Do we I need think to, I won't, guys? But for now, I think it's okay. Okay. Yeah. And then we can all roll flat. Okay. Now I I will raise it to thirteen to get let myself go first. Oh. Okay. Well, are you willing to that? are you willing to raise to fourteen or sticking at twelve? I think this point not worth it. Yeah, well, let's see how bad he can fuck us up uh, yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, so you um, you guys um, make your roll at a DC 12. Now, which skill would you like to use, Edgar? Hmm. Um, I'm going to... Whatever skill we pick now, we won't be able to... Will we be able to use again later? Or... No. No, one, one no. okay. Got um, I'm going to... I'm gonna stick with uh, animal handling uh, to keep control of the sand horse going through. Okay. Um, okay, that is uh, 23. Nice. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you you definitely control your sand horse and um, you know <laughs> manage to steer it around all the broken rocks and boulders that are scattered across the uh, the, the bed of the uh, chasm here. Okay, Bjorn, yourself. Um. If I use athletics now, I won't be able to use it for the rest of the uh, right. chase. Yep. 
then I'll save it for when I really need it. It's the same as like skill check mechanics, right? You can't just like he's like I'm, I'm amazing this one skill. I'm just gonna do it six times in a row. Right, okay. <laughs> um, I just need to be the, need to be the, I need to be the thirteen. Is that correct? Uh, twelve for you guys. Twelve, okay, okay. Yes. Hello. Windy JD and coming in with that raiding party. How you doing, guys? Nice to see you. We are in the middle of a chase, a wall of water with the faces of Egyptian spirits and gods on its surface is chasing our heroes down a river gorge, and they are attempting to escape before it consumes them. <laughs> and jump okay. in the giveaway. <laughs> um, this is going to be silly. Nice. I'd like to <laughs> perform... I'm like really like showboating as I'm riding my camel. I'm doing a performance check. I'm like doing like really like performative like camel riding. Is just like <laughs> unnecessary, but it looks amazing. Maybe if I roll high enough. Do we feel inspired by this? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna roll a performance check to uh, ride my camel. Is that cool? Um, is that yeah. a good enough justification? Yeah, please see. Okay, sweet. Oh, baby, God hates me. That's a net one. Oof. If you got them, folks, like those phoenixes fly so cool. for a total of. Like, you think you look cool, but the rest of are just like, this is really the time. That's it. <laughs> it's like, um, so it's as, like Bjorn thinks he looks cool. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're like. But you're probably telling otherwise. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, come on, Santos, and you, you, you're doing that thing where you're like slipping off the side and like riding along, holding on to the, the side of it. Like, you actually fall off and like drop behind a little bit. Oh. Um, no. Okay, Esmeralda, what's you do? Can I contemplate the history of magical waves? Um, <laughs> actually, to make it more, make it make make sense, could I kind of think back and see if I have any experience with this kind of thing in the past I could draw on to kind of figure out how to run more quickly? Um, it's... <laughs> in the past life, um, you were a sandhorse. In the past life, I was a sandhorse. Um, no, it's... Um, I mean, what's, what's how we put some total of our experiences? <laughs> indeed. Um, or... Maybe still trying to plan ahead. She's sort of trying to think back what she knows about these things that she might have come across reading or studying or doing monster hunting, you know, mm -hmm. um, to see if there's anything she should be prepared for. Okay, go for it. Which doesn't ask make her go faster, but uh, let's see. I have a blue dot. What does that mean? I'm proficient. Okay. Uh, that's 11. Wow. Wait. I will use my knowledge from a past life to add a d6 to that. Nonsense. <laughs> Um, which makes this into a 14. Okay, so... Is knowledge of a, a past life class specific or race specific? Race specific. How do you get that? Oh, okay, that's cool. By, by dying the and then not DC, being dead. <laughs> the DC <laughs> of your chase check was 12. Thanks to Edgar's animal handling, your average of the three of your rolls was 13. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you just, my four? <laughs> you just made it. Edgar, can you please <laughs> please roll me five d ten? Okay. So. <laughs> and uh, I will roll my with antipods. A corner. Uh. Okay. So I got ten overall. <laughs> ten on five. Wait, d10? ten. Oh, 5d10. Uh, yeah, 10 on 5d10. Wow. What? <laughs> Can we say he doesn't roll the next one? Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you, you do this once each. Future roll. Okay. Future roll. Oh, we're um, all doing our own? Um, no, no, no. You do this once each. Like, okay. There's a, there's like a, a di <laughs> for for each, for each one. Okay. So okay. you guys go forward 10 feet. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Go team. <laughs> wow. Everyone's pulling off his horse. I'm just Meanwhile, sitting there. He went past. Wait. Is Wait, 10 feet the movement speed of a camel? No, but yeah, that's, that's how, that's, that's how, far you, that's how far you pull ahead because like, everyone's oh. moving. Oh, oh, I see, I see. So, uh, so we're all moving like 40 ish yes. feet or something. Yes, and now, Edgar, I also need a d12, please. And I'll be, I'll be amused if you get more on the d12 than you did on 5d10. Right. <laughs> right. Cool, it was nine. <laughs> um, oh, this is bad. I also passed my chase check, so I also get to roll 5d10. And oh, I move oh forward 35 feet. So, okay. one, two, three, as the wall of water comes charging oh, no. through. And you can now see it, like, it's like 
round the columns of rock behind you, you can you start to see the breaking waves, like it's a, like a ocean wave breaking um, on the beach, it just like starts cascading round and like tumbling over itself. Like um, uh, you guys are probably all too young. There was a there was a Guinness commercial um, a long time ago, which was like a black and white, really artsy one. It was like an old surfer dude, and like the he's like surfing on these waves, and the waves, the breaking waves, were turning into white horses and like start charging, um, kind of like the um, uh, on the the river next to Rivendell as well. That kind of stuff. Anyway, oh, um, it sounds cool. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so you just see the the waters <laughs> like breaking. You see those massive um, animal shapes and, and the face of Antipods coming, leering <laughs> around as this huge wall of water comes surging after you and closes the gap between you. Now, Edgar, how was your D twelve there? Nine, you said. Correct. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so. A nine on the events table is a risky shortcut. Ooh. Okay. Oh. A shortcut. What does that involve? A shortcut presents itself to the group, and you can pursue that, or, <laughs> um, also, but the um, the you know, taking the shortcut has a risk associated with it. Okay. So, <laughs> it's your, <laughs> it's your choice. Hey, thanks for that follow, Nag. You um, know what the risk is. You um, you see that the the way forward it, it's clearly a shorter route, like and will take you ahead further in the in the chase. But there are a bunch of like broken boulders and stones strewn across the bottom there. It's much rougher ground. <sighs> now, if you choose, I mean, if you I'm choose better. to take it, if you choose to take it, um, Edgar, it will be a DC thirteen check. Okay, let's do it. All right, everyone, this way. <laughs> and like, okay. start heading down everyone, the shortcut. Because of the way I described it, please make me a um, group animal handling check. Oh boy. DC thirteen. You as well. Oh boy. Everyone, yeah. Group, please. Fifteen. Oh. Yes. Fifteen. Eight. Eight. Thirteen. <laughs> thirteen. Shh. Could I stop rolling these digital dice? <laughs> <laughs> just get real dice. <laughs> it just, it just, it does the math for you, which is nice. It does the monster <laughs> math. <laughs> it does the monster math. <laughs> um, okay, as I said, that puts you at an average of twelve. The DC was thirteen. No. The broken terrain does not sorry. allow you to pull further ahead. You do not get to roll to widen the gap again I'm afraid. Okay, if you had succeeded you could have rolled 5d10 again. Okay. What the risk? That brings us into round 2. This time the DC for the group check is 14. Bjorn. Okay. Esmeralda, Edgar, would you like to raise that ante to guarantee going first or keep it as is? Um, all of us going first, or yes, just one yeah. person. All of us have to make all of us. Yeah, we'll decide. I, I'll leave that decision to you. Uh, my skill bonuses are high enough that I've probably got a better chance of succeeding than you two, but so it's up to you. Damn. <laughs> I I feel comfortable raising it to like. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. We'll raise it by one. Sure. sure. Raise it. Yeah. Okay. Stick. I'm, yeah. I'm going to let you guys go first. I'm, I'm going to keep mine as 14. Um, okay. okay, so um, Edgar, what skill are you using? Uh, and how? I'm going to use uh, perception to like <laughs> kind of quickly recognize, like quickly see like any falling boulders so I'll know to avoid it or, yeah. you know. It's like, how can, I, how can I find a way out of this stupid shortcut? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this was a bad idea, but I that be Abort, abort. Okay. Um, yes, so roll me that perception check. Got 15 for that. <laughs> 15, okay. Bjorn, what are you using and how? I'm going to choose a dangerous path, but lie to my camel and say it's fine because I'm using perception. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> so you're trying to s telepathically deceive your steed into thinking the way forward. Your loyal steed trusting you with his ankles. <laughs> Look, it's either that or I intimidate him. <laughs> you, you can do that, but 
it doesn't change what the ground is like and your camel will be, will be reckless and there will be a d6 roll on a 1 the camel will fall <gasps> oh no <laughs> oh. I like you like that? <laughs> you monster! I think it's great. <laughs> These stinks. I live for the drama, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yes. It's okay. It's like, it's, like, it's like the rings of power. We will see the camel get up safely afterwards. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> By the way, fantastic show. Yes. Um, look, Sam Horse, that that sharp cliff face. We could definitely do it, man. We could definitely just. <laughs> You know what? I trust you. You know what? You got this, man. You absolutely got this. It's it's nothing for you. Make that deception check. <laughs> it, was a, it, it was a 13. 13. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, no. Esmeralda. Can you, can you just get a nat 20 for us? That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, I Ooh. would like to, you know, as I'm running forward, use my skills of investigation to try and look for places where the ground seems more solid and I might be able to get more footing to the opposite of what I've quickly. done <laughs> yes indeed I would never lie to my camel yet okay please um 25 oh god thank okay. god okay you're welcome for an average <laughs> for an average of, ridiculous bonus for an average of 17 <laughs> that means you pass and are able to pull forward pull away Yay. um i will i was a 14 and that is not enough okay um i do not pass my chase check so i do not get to close the gap okay um bjorn roll me 5d10 5d10 right can he be 10 on the dice the world wants to know <laughs> i hope so fucking unlikely <laughs> Uh, 31, baby. Nice. One, two, three. Okay, you... Uh, I'm its loyal steed. Ahead, yes. Okay, so you are now... And they do not get to close the gap. So you are over... Yes, you're 120 feet ahead now. Sweet. Um, and... Nice. But you can still see... And you can still hear the water crashing and rushing through the gully behind you. Bjorn, roll me a d12 on that t complications table. Yes, sir. Oh, events table, sorry. Um, an eight. An eight? Oh, this is that one I was talking about. Okay. Paths <laughs> converge. It's good. Paths <laughs> converge. Bad. Okay. So, um, as you're all, you, you know, you're not all just like running in a group. You're kind of like spreading out, going around yeah. separate ways around mm. stone, you know, stone columns and things. Mm. Bjorn, as you swerve, oh, I need to roll a d6 for your poor Santos here. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Everyone, What's his name again? On the natural one, um, he will fall. Speedy. I forget his name. It was Speedy. Speedy. It's just Speedy. Speedy. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I rolled a two. Woo! <laughs> Safe. Geary, Geary. <laughs> okay, your, your Santos manages to keep his footing just. It skids and trips a little bit, manages to keep I galloping on. I told you on. you got this, man. You got this. And it turns back with like, <laughs> a curled lip. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's we pissed. made it. Um, and you can have words later. But as you as you force it off down this path, Bjorn, and uh, succeed in pulling ahead as you did... Um, you see around the rock column to your left as you're galloping along with the with the Santos clattering down the gully here, um, the water comes splashing around there, and you see the head of a crocodile god. It's more this long snoot reaching out of the head of you know, the Not face of the, the water, snoot. and um, it is going to because your paths converge. You can each make an attack against each other. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Should I smite? Can I smite? If you want to, yeah. Alright, sure, I'll smite. This doesn't slow you down, because this is outside smite of the snoot. normal thing. <laughs> snoot smiting. Right. Does a 27 hit? Uh, yes, it does. Um, okay, so I'll do my normal sm uh, slashing damage, which is 9, plus my improved smite, which is just all the time. That, that's an extra 5. And then I will expend one first level or one second level spell slot to do a divine smite, which is 3d8. One, two, three. 
define the next... this is this isn't so much a numbers thing here it's just the fact that you're using the smites you know because we're in more of an okay, abstract okay. kind of thing here you know we're not in combat in not in initiative okay. um, describe to me how the power of the of the ladies of the fanes comes through you as we're like um as we're riding on this camel i'm uh i see this like watery shape of like a crocodile god like almost about to like overtake me and i remember i don't know <laughs> the the old wrinkly face of uh of uh oh she's not the mountain thane what thane is she again yours no 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 um the, the one that madame ava oh madame yeah ava. yeah yeah <laughs> madame ava's old wrinkly face i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs> I channel like divine and shadow energy into my sword, and I just whack it away. But it would be proud. <laughs> Old people love puns, right? I, I don't know why I didn't expect. That. <laughs> I was trying to think of a cool pun for like a crocodile or alligator or Sobek the the. The Egyptian god of alligators and stuff. I was like, I don't have it. I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> so back off or something. I don't know. Um, okay. So yes, yeah, so you <laughs> stupid. <laughs> you cry that out, and the the power of the ladies of the fanes just comes crashing through your words and just slams like as a wall of force into this wall of water that is coming towards you, and it just explodes in spray as. Our friend over there in chat, Seb, giving me that disadvantage at the start of the round of the game Ooh. there, uh, meant I missed you with a mere eight on the dice. And Yay. the water crashes and the, the image of the crocodilian head just dis dissipates and the water's... Now, interesting thing, the water's crashed down around you, Bjorn, but without this, you know, form, this... this um, threatening nature towards you and as they do, as they hit the rock all around you, they withdraw to the south. They as go if, south. As if they're traveling back towards the basin of the Red Oasis, yeah. Is it like collecting back at the big boy, or is it just going back to like where it came from in the first place? It, se it seems like you know the, your use of your divine powers and the smiting of this thing has t um, destroyed this part of the conjured wall of water. Oh, interesting. And it is being, yeah. It is being oh, it's like not sentient anymore. It's just like the normal water. Um, it has been, yeah. It has been knocked out of the uh, the main Ooh. wall of this. Okay. So, there we have it, and as you quickly steer your Santos round the next column of rock, you see your friends ahead of you and urge your camel on to catch up with them. And that brings us into the third and final round. The DC is 16 this time. Would you like to go first? Or are you going to leave it? I feel comfortable where we're at. I, I feel comfortable where we're at, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll leave mine the same as well. So would you like to tell me what you're doing and how? Hmm. You said you said third and final. I said yes. Yeah, it's a round per player. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. I love frog god games. Good. Good stuff. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a uh, sleight of hand to like <laughs> really be able to like well like. Ear the sand horse, like, <laughs> like kind of really I love it. my steering. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you using? That's it fantastic. A uh, slide of, of hand. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Roll that. Uh, okay, that's twenty-three nice. on that. Nice. Okay, Bjorn. Um, Bjorn remembers his time in the woods he remembers piling around with other animals sand horse well not sand horses but horses woods horses savannah horses tree horses you know various horses love the tree horses exactly <laughs> and he he channels his outlander background and um he's going to roll with survival <laughs> okay please do uh, oh it's only a 13. God, I hate these dice. <laughs> okay, Esmeralda, for your last check. My last check. Um, I'm just gonna pull up with like a random do... number generator. Stealth. Um, 
I guess I got into this kind of moderately magical slash sentient thing, and I'd like to kind of look for eddies of sand or, you know, like sort of tw um, places where I can sort of dodge out of line of sight of this giant wall of water, or you make it then go in some other direction, I guess. Okay. So that's going to be uh, 14. Um, but wait, can I use my Delishment Pass light? Uh, how often get you to use it? Four times for long rest. Right. Check them off. Okay. Um, and think back, I guess, to my many, my extensive stealthiness. So that's a okay. That's turn to during twenty. So an extra six. Yeah. Okay. So between the three of you, that gives you an average of eighteen. Ooh, so you God. are able to pull ahead. <laughs> Esmeralda, give me five d ten. All right. Let's see how we do. And I rolled a natural one, so they do not get to close the gap. Hey, Gia. Oh, 21. Oh. 21. Mason's uh, 21? The, the best roller of us all. If, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so, yes, you pull 20 feet ahead again as the waters come crashing in behind you, and you um, just, you know, kind of scutter through the rock chasms here and the various pillars, and you can see the waves starting to diminish a little behind you as you are pulling a further afield ahead of them and able to escape here. Now, um, as you get to this last chase check, um, Esmeralda, give me that d12 for the final event. Alright, let's see what happens. Let's roll a one! Finishing strong! <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, interesting, okay. This is convoluted terrain, so there's a lot of rock pillars and things here, so you're kind of disappearing through them and like breaking line of sight from the wall of water um, with its faces you know, breaking on the, on the face of it. Um, and you can attempt to make a group stealth check. I'm down for this. And, okay. Um, against their, um, their perception check, and if you succeed, the chase is over as you're able to escape Ooh. from the let's try let's try <laughs> I'm going for it okay okay so Edgar what was your stealth check I got 16 okay Bjorn stealth check yes yeah I said group stealth check. A oh, group stealth check. Sorry, I thought it was just, just my man. Nope. God, it's terrible. <laughs> um, it only rolled one. It should be rolling with disadvantage. Give me a second. Um, yeah, you have to right-click it and select disadvantage. Okay, that's a four. <laughs> okay, that's real. Oh, bad. this isn't gonna bode well. Um, I rolled. A six, so I got a 15, which is insulting. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, for an average of 11. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh boy. <laughs> so, my perception check was a 16. I rolled a 14. 14 on the dice plus two. Um, okay. So, you are unable to elude the um, attentions of this eldritch force that is spurring on the waters of the red oasis here but as they close in on you and you are just charging forward just like just going with the reins going go go sand horses go and like charging through <laughs> yeah this is camel the... racing <laughs> <laughs> you see the walls, the walls of rock on either side just like whooshing by and um where? As, as <laughs> you see, um, the eyes of Anctipods, this depiction of Anctipods on the on the in the center of this wall of water, just locked in on you. <sighs> this this hand kind of reaches out from the water as well and starts like reaching towards you. And as you um, spin around a particularly large column of rock in the riverbed ahead of you, you hear a splashing, crashing sound, even more violent than before as the rivers of the red oasis reach 
their limits and mm. the enchantment is broken as you enchantment. were more than a dash away you had pulled far Yay! enough ahead Woo! in the chase <laughs> and you gallop on your sand horses as the last little splashes of water desperately reach towards you and smash into the ground, gr ground and stone of the riverbed before retreating south back towards the Red Oasis. <laughs> Yay! We did it! In spite of ourselves! <laughs> okay. Despite my terrible rolls. <laughs> <laughs> So, you go charging on towards the north on your sand horses, you know, jiving and, you know, diving backwards and forwards through the columns of rock here. And as you continue on your journey safe from the waters of the Red Oasis, you start to see the eternal river bending and opening wider and the walls of rock, the canyon on either side, starts to lower down and come closer to the riverbed. And you can see the opening of the desert stretching out to either side, to the east and west. And ahead, you start to see the outlines of the buildings of Muhar. As you see a group of figures gathered together at the end of the riverbed, where it exits out onto the floodplain towards where the city perches on the edge of the Mohar Oasis and as you get closer you see these figures are actually waving to you and quite welcomingly it seems <laughs> and uh, do not seem to be too much of a threat and as you get up towards them assuming these are these keepers of the feather that you are told will be awaiting you you see a couple of locals and Asara and Krug. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> and they are awaiting you. And um, Krug's like, hey, hey, over here. And um, you, you go over there and you skid your sand horses to a stop. And they say, come on. I'm sorry. I hope you don't need to rest. There's no time. We need to get moving. The whole city's in uproar. And you look past them, and now that you're actually out of the riverbed, you can see a decent view of the city, and there are just flames rising oh up from several of the buildings. And you can see smaller pinpricks of light as torches being brandished by angry mobs are running this way and that. And you hear a crashing and smashing from the temple structures as the false gods are toppled, and the people of Harakir rise up against Do the tyrannical the pretenders. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the two um, keepers of the feather um, here um, are guided um, by sorry, guiding you and your friends around the outskirts of the city, avoiding pockets of violence and uprising as the temple guards and the, the faithful of the uh, the false gods battle in the streets of Mahar, and you travel off to the east around the edges of the Mahar Oasis, retracing your steps from that first journey you made as you arrived here in Harakia, back towards the Bent Pyramid. One of the Keepers of the Feather turns, I will scout the head and make sure that the way is clear and he sets off running and then leaps and mid-leap transforms as you, as so Wilder cool. and Edgar are well aware that all of the keepers of the feather are were ravens and um, <laughs> he transforms into a raven and flies off ahead um, as his robes just you know, scatter to the ground beneath him <laughs> everybody's aware of something like just be a bear like a normal person <laughs> You're just a regular bear are you? <laughs> just the guy who's also a bear <laughs> <laughs> and um, you hurry through the northern desert towards the bent pyramid and after a journey of um, I think there's a couple of times you have to kind of um, avoid patrols and f um, you know, groups of fighters da dashing this way and that um, you do see the dark blotch on the horizon that is the solid stone meteorite stone that is the bent pyramid crouching huddled 
on the horizon there. And as you crest over the final dunes and skid down to the pyramid's side, you see your Bastetti friend who you met here at this pyramid <laughs> so long ago as our friend Benimba, the Bastetti Yay. merchant, is there quickly wrapping a cloak around the naked <laughs> keeper of the feather who has changed, <laughs> changed back into their regular form. I don't have any pairs of underwear. He's ruined over the years. <laughs> Like the Hulk problem. Nah, you know? look at this little guy. He's like shifting <laughs> clothing. The best merchant. <laughs> and um, she, she waves. She's like, it is good to see you all well, and we meet again here. Yes, but it was so, splendid to see you. you're doing well. What must we do? It remains as solid and impassable as ever. Now that I'm covered in the same material, I can probably just walk right through it. A <laughs> bold you claim. Against the door or something? <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like, tries to like, just like, walk, walk in like the walls now. He just keeps like, like a video game character, like walking against the walls. Like, this should be working. I don't know why. You are, <laughs> you are 20 feet away at the moment. Oh, okay, then we walk up to it. Okay. Sneaky like, all sneaky like, we should walk up to it. So yeah, you, you slide down off the sand horses and uh, leave them with the Keepers of the Feather and the five Good of morning. you. You're in charge now, Speedy. <laughs> You're the king of the sand horses. I like the other place I go to. <laughs> 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 Fucking Feywild. <laughs> Some people just aren't born leaders. <laughs> And the, f <laughs> the five of you, with Krieg and uh, and Asara, um, walk slow motion with the <laughs> setting sun blazing and reflecting <laughs> off the dark black Tensing surface you. of the bent pyramid. Again, you see those rising upsides until the top section where it changes angle suddenly, um, inexplicably, and keeps going up to the point. And you stride forward. And Bjorn, as you step to the front of the group, as you approach nearer, you, with the armor of the same substance, made of the same stone, made of the same meteor as it fell and crashed into the sands of Harakir before it was taken into the domains of Dread by the Dark Powers. This is a meteorite fall that happened way before it became a domain of Dread. Um, much like Borovir, it was once in the material plane. And you, striding forward, Bjorn, starts to feel a magical energy rushing through your armor. And little sparks of ozone-smelling um, electricity just kind of arc between like where your arm swings past the breastplate mm. and um, just as you're moving forward. And... The rest of you walking behind Bjorn start to see ahead on the side of the pyramid sparkings of that similar kind of electrical light. But ahead they are taking shape and they are repeating in the same location, not randomly sparking over the entire surface. And you see the outline of a rectangular doorway lit by these small electrical discharges and um, you know arcing bolts of um, you know, kind of blue electrical light. And Bjorn, as you step closer up to the edge of the pyramid itself, you reach forward and place your palm against the surface of the bent pyramid. And as you make that connection, there is a arcing blast of electricity from your armor to the wall of the pyramid. And as it does so, the blocks seemingly solid before, starts to shift and move and slide in and to the side. And there is a dark opening and stairs descending beneath the bent pyramid. Oh, guys, there was like a door here this entire time. We could have just gone in. Ooh, nice job, Bjorn. <laughs> I don't I think know. You might have needed your armor for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just go down, I guess. Let's. Is it dark? Like, 
I just... assume we light a, can- uh, a torch. <laughs> just a candle. <laughs> yeah. It's just a candle. <laughs> this little light of fire. It's one of those like um. <laughs> it's one of those like Scrooge like like candles. <laughs> Just do, brass yeah. just do like the, I have like a little like, oh, nightcap. Do the cobalt thing where you stick it on your head. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll cast like fire shield on myself as well to have like little sparks of flames to like mm. dim. Does it uh, cast light? I don't have dark vision. Uh, it does like. I think it does like, cast dim light, the, isn't it? 30 10 feet? feet of dim light. 10 feet. Um, I, Edgar, yeah. I'll follow close to that. Edgar, the, um, the compass tree. Um, on your hat, um, Sporlax he says, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Warn me when you do that, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but does he also get covered in fire, or is it just like the area around him? <laughs> he's just, uh, like, he's yeah. just like running his fingers through it like a moody teenager like, with a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, guys, we have torches. We have fucking torches. But this is so much cooler. Also, yeah, it's <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> He honestly, a little mushroom guy reminds me so much of Calcifer from House of Castle. Oh, he do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let me move all of you with your friendos up to the pyramid up here. And uh, as before, beyond I've... beyond the bent pyramid, you could see the wall of mist, and through it, I still see home. the wave of water. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. No worries. I transported myself in stream over. I'm lost in the desert. Guys. Oh! There you go. Leave no one behind. Up top. Aha. And you, um, yes, with the flames playing over the surface of your friends, make your way <laughs> forward and down. It's a slightly disorientating experience as the, the steps are made of the same Kind of, it's almost like an obsidian, almost crisp, black crystal-like stone. So the, the reflection of Edgar's flames is reflected and refracted around the whole place. And you know the, the staircase below you, uh, as equally as the walls and the, the sloped ceiling above you. And you go down and you feel a shift in the air. As if something gigantic had breathed out a sigh of relief. And a woof of stale, dry air comes up the staircase from below you. And you sense before you see the vast space ahead of you. And as you emerge onto a ledge, the five of you look out into a huge cavernous space beneath the pyramid, beneath the sands of Harakira themselves. Cut off from the labyrinth, this place not recorded or talked about by anything that Krieg or anyone had discovered or the Magi had talked about, only accessible with the correct items and through the walls of the Bent Pyramid, you find yourself in this huge space, vast columns, and statues of the old gods arrayed through the space. Some of them toppled by some events of the past, leaning up against the others or against slabs of stone. And you see various platforms. <laughs> Basically, you're in a Assassin's Creed level. <laughs> <laughs> and in the center of this vast space, there is a column of rock and a single beam of starlight coming down from the top of the pyramid, which you know is closed at the top. As the folks have tried to climb and see if there was a way in from the top where the, where the roof changes shape. But this single kind of spotlight effect is coming down on a dark purple, green, and shimmering kind of silver veined crystal about the size of a halfling <laughs> basically about three feet tall not carved not shaped purposefully like our beautiful inspiration crystals here but jagged and you know misshapen and different sized forms but the facets illuminated by this beam of light coming down from the ceiling do reflect as it slowly 
rotates. And Esmeralda, being the most well-traveled, these two having never left Barovia before today, this time, um, you recognize this. This, I recognize this. is a Shadowfell shard. Oh, a crystal oh. Is shard. A crystal of yes. Shadowfell energy. As oh, I shard. Ignore, look here. ignore that <laughs> idiot in the middle there and continue boldly <laughs> forward. And <laughs> you recognize this as a a condensing, a a a a, um, a realization of the Shadow Plane's energy, which you know the domains of dread are nestled within the shadow plane and these crystals are intrinsically tied to the shadow plane as a whole and offer various ways to channel its energy or store its energy and it seems this one is being used as a prison as it floats there in the center of this vast space and some recent friends of ours, as we opened Virtual Greyhawk Con um, last weekend, um, they dealt with a similar shard, um, Shadowfell shard, that was in the halls of a night hag whose castle was half in the material plane, half in the shadow plane. And oh, that's cool. Causing all sorts of trouble. But they destroyed it. They, they destroyed it and then she cut off their exit, so they had to escape through the shadow plane. The only way they could escape was through the portal <laughs> into the shadow plane. So I wonder how they did. <laughs> So, Thank you, Phantom. <laughs> there are a great many platforms and statues and ledges and things ahead of you between you Yow. and this crystal in the center, which you assume is what you are aiming for. Now, we had ourselves one of those nice chase sequences before. We are now heading into a skill challenge. Ooh, like I love these. The old 4th edition ones. Mm -hmm. You need to attain a set number of successes, which is secret, before you get three failures. Okay. Can we say, use the same skills as before, or is it, um, it still carrying you Re over? Reset, reset. Okay, blank slate. Yeah, blank slate here. Yeah, you can you can only use skills that you're proficient in. You can only use each skill once, and you have to explain how you're using that to help you get to the crystal. And the DC for this skill challenge is 15. So, so can you describe the terrain between us and the crystal again? Sorry. It is. It drops away below you from from the platform that you're on. But then there are um, there are various ledges and columns and st um, toppled statues and basically it's like a platform game basically. Okay. Like Prince of Persia. This. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, you know they look kind of slippery, um, but there are you know there are various um, ledges. You know that that statue of Anubis has a nice um, like it's fallen over, so it's snoot just sticking up, so you could like lasso around it and <laughs> things like that. Okay. Um, so skills like you know survival to spot the, a good route, or uh, you know, acrobatics to uh, you know to, to manage to skip across these things here. <laughs> Seb saying Bjorn should intimidate the crystal so it falls onto the ground. <laughs> 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 this one's immune, Seb. This one's immune. I let him intimidate. I let him intimidate his spectral sand horse. That's as far as we go. Oh no, deceive. Sorry. By the way, your Santos is not going to forgive you for that deceiving. Um, oh no! It was a successful. It, it was a successful deception check. I, he doesn't know I deceived him. <laughs> He's like, oh, Bill made it. Bill made an anonymous mistake. Yeah. <laughs> also, we succeeded. So technically, I you wasn't I lying. Do that's true. That's true. <laughs> we did do it. You boosted his confidence. Yeah. I lied to him so he would. I basically did Michael Jordan in Space Jam, where I told them that he had the stuff, uh, but the stuff was inside of him all along. <laughs> Aww. Character growth yeah. for the horse. Hey, so anyway, uh, can I summon a giant spider? It doesn't um, say what the limit on my fine steed is. It should, but it doesn't. Hmm. 
Yeah, so. usually these summon things have CR ratings on them, but this one just says y your GM might allow other animals to be summoned as steeds. I can't ride a medium sized spider, I need a large sized spider. Yeah. <laughs> Is it summon steed? Yeah, it's uh, 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 fine steed. Fine steed. Um, you summon a spirit that assumes the form of an unusually intelligent, strong, and loyal steed, creating a long-lasting bond with it. Long-lasting bond? You're just like tossing, tossing him aside for a different creature here. I'll always come back to you, Sandhorse. <laughs> <laughs> but you literally cannot stick to walls right now. <laughs> um. I think Yeah, I think I think I think you had to make that choice when you first cast the spell because it says um casting the spell again summons the same steed. <laughs> <laughs> Forever sand horse. Oh, interesting. Oh, you can't have more than one seed bonded by the spell at a time. As an action, you can release the steed from its bond any time, causing it to disappear. Well, if I if I release Sandhorse from his bond, can I summon? Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> well, that means that means like yeah, you can you can unsummon it. Okay, so now all my fine seeds is is going to be a Sandhorse. I'm not sure, but um, I mean, you can certainly try. As the <laughs> saying goes. Okay, well, let me try and summon. I'd like to summon a spider. I could also settle for a war goat. Dennis, Dennis has a good, <laughs> Dennis has a good point here. It does have a ten-minute casting time. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, Damn it! Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> we have homework. <laughs> Cheers, Dennis. Uh, Welcome in. It's good to have you. Okay. Keep him in line, Dennis. Keep him in line. It's, 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 <laughs> one of my proficiency skills is animal handling. True, true. And I have to use a, uh, proficiency skills for this task? Yeah, proficiency, yeah, proficiency skills that you have, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll use insight to... Wait, that's that's reading people only. Two of my proficiency skills I can't use for this thing. <laughs> insight isn't just... No, no, it's Dennis. No, it's Dennis. If, it, if it's possible, I'll say yes. Um, he was also about to waste um, one of their failures by uh, casting us, trying to cast a spell, which wouldn't work. Okay, okay. <laughs> so um, you saved him, you saved him. Thank you. <laughs> um, I will use my insightful knowledge of uh, reading situations and be like, oh, yes. I can sort of figure out a pretty good route for this. Uh, so can, that, can that, I roll with insight? That would be... Hmm, let's see. I'm looking at, like the terrain and I'm like getting a picture in my head of the people who might have made it and I'm just like you know what I bet they thought this this and the other thing <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah roll me an insight check to see which routes through will actually lead to the pedestal and which will end in a dead end okay I don't know why we're talking about this so much it, it's gonna be a oh that was a 19 okay I was expecting a very low roll <laughs> That is one success. Yay! Edgar, Esmeralda. Okay. Hmm. I think right now, after kind of seeing Bjorn, where Bjorn's looking, um, I'm going to use... Yeah, we'll stick with perception to kind of like view the best route and like I'm also waiting to see kind of when someone else jumps through this like to, to look and like be remember to mimic their movements to get through it easier <laughs> okay. so yeah give me a perception check um that's 17 okay that is a second success you um 
look carefully ahead. You know, you like go down. You're like a like a like a little basset hound. You're like you're just, just like poking forward. <laughs> and, and Sporlax is like, yeah, like he's like, mm, yeah, I, I don't think we should go that way. Now look over that one. That one looks dodgy as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and... Uh, there's a more to the left, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. spot um, you spot a couple of statues that look like they slant up nicely towards the pedestal. But the way they're resting, you know, if anyone like put any weight on them, they would just collapse to the the floor of the cavern below. Um, okay, Esmeralda, how about you? So, um, is it just platforms, or is it just like trappy things as well? I would like to try to use uh, my performance, but anyway, this is my dance. Can there be like a section that's just like you guys see Galaxy Quest? Is like the chopper section? This the ridiculous like giant hammers that are smashing, like cutting across. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an acrobatics check more than a dancing. No, check. but she watch for the rhythm a bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. Right. <laughs> Sounds if like it has a insight. She can dance to it. Sounds like it's an insight check. Also, she's a blade singer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I sing as I do it? Let it get better. <laughs> there, there is nobody. You could. You could perform. For Edgar and Bjorn and and uh, Sarah, I'm totally showing off. But no, I'm, I'm showing off. I do this 100 because I saw Bjorn doing trying to do his performance track earlier, and I was like, no, nah, I'm definitely not. Because <laughs> um, you you could inspire them with with your song and, and sure encourage them to not give up hope. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I guess I'll inspire them. <laughs> We're so inspired that we might well, actually not succeed sure. in something. Well, we'll see if I actually. I'm not sure if I've inspired you yet. I probably inspired you. Got twenty-three. Okay. I'm so inspired nice. that I know. That is a Yay. third <laughs> success. Now I'm so um, glad we saved her from being, you know, mummified. Because that was inspirational. Bjorn, <laughs> Bjorn sees the way forward. He sees which of the routes leads to the pedestal and which will uh, take you further away. Edgar spots which parts of it are treacherous and uh, uh, you know, advises you so you can skip over that. As you are kind of. Shakily making your way up, looking around, concerned. Did you go the right way? Is this is this going to work at all? A beautiful, ethereal voice, as if from beyond the grave, begins to <laughs> sing. Hang on, I could do this unless unless Marin actually wants to sing. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> um, 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 I can't do twenty three level of singing. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look here. Um, oh god, um, Mason, what was that Baldur's Gate Tavern called? Oh, I got it, it's okay. Oh, Elf Song Tavern. Yeah, Elf Song, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn it, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yes, as you're kind of slowly making your way up these slippery obsidian slopes and things, you're like, can... Can we make it? Can we? Can we? Can we be successful? And you, you know, kind of begin to doubt yourselves. A beautiful voice echoes through the cavern from behind you as you turn, and Esmeralda, eyes locked on the crystal floating in the center, her terrifying, luminous eyes <laughs> burning with a passion. And a belief in all of you that you've come this far, that you can, Literally. you can make this, you can, you can be successful. You have each other. <laughs> you've defeated the undead. You've survived the Amber Temple. Strad is rendered useless, impotent in his castle. <laughs> And you are back here, together, in this place, about to rescue the first of the Ladies of the Faints. And as you start, you. as you start to move forward, <laughs> encouraged by this, you are suddenly shown why the Bent's Temple has its strange shape. Ooh. As you start to make your way forward. There is a rumbling, crunching sound, and large sections of the pyramid's um, surface above you starts to dislodge and... 
you discover why there are these strange large blocks lying in the bottom of this chamber as the ceiling starts to shift as parts of it dislodge and start to fall down towards you you are on three successes if you can get to this column without three failures and avoid these falling blocks you can achieve your goal back to the three of you who would like to make the next check I can go if no one has go for it um, thanks like for maintaining that dramatic like... edge there thanks oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who wants to go next I, I could go uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. go for it <laughs> nobody else wants to go with us I could <laughs> Um, chat, <laughs> chat, I try, I try. Yeah. Uh, I was, he tries so hard, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, yeah, me too. Bjorn steps up to the plate, his <laughs> eyes uh, darting between the the terrain and Esmeralda's amazing dance, and he's trying to use how insightful he is to be like, does she really mean all the things this dance is saying? Um, and then he just decides to believe in himself. He's so inspired. He, he takes a running leap and he's like, you know, um, like using full energy, full athleticism to get through this. Indeed, yes, <laughs> can you strain that last effort? And because Esmeralda got over a 20 on that performance check, though she is not a bard, you may use bardic inspiration. You have a d4 to add to your roll. Ooh. I'm going to do the d4 first for drama's sake. <laughs> <laughs> It's a four. Four on the D4. Ooh. All right. <laughs> what do I need to beat? The DC is 16. 16. Okay, so I have eight plus eight to athletics plus the plus okay. the D4. Dirty 20. So I, I need to roll above a four, I think. Okay. Don't fuck me now. Guys, that's a nat 20. Yeah. Hey. Yes. You gotta focus. Let those phoenixes Yay. fly. How do you like that for drama, John? As Bjorn <laughs> leaps, athletic heroism flowing through his biceps and muscles as he. <laughs> kind of I go full um, um, Zack Snyder Flash. That was like the most <laughs> inspirational scene of like 2022 or whatever. Where it's just like you see all like the sparks coming out of his suit. It's like reacting to like the meteorite stone, and he's just like, "Yes, <laughs> this place opens for me." <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Bjorn, as you leap, one of the massive blocks of stone smashes through the slanting column that you are climbing, and you leap forward and grab onto the fang of one of the statues that's ahead of you and pull yourself up onto its head and continue on towards the crystal. Edgar, Esmeralda. Hmm. Okay. So, Edgar is going to wipe a tear from Sporlax's eye from that beautiful music. I'm sorry, it was beautiful. Um, it was just so fucking beautiful. <laughs> Eyes running down Bjorn's beard. <laughs> oh god. This now. Tears from an empty socket. Yeah, your, your eyes are gone, but your tear ducts are still there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Edgar. Uh, I have no eyes yet. I must cry. Edgar is going to use uh, side hand, I suppose, as he kind of jumps like through these like pillars, things like you know, grip onto edges of things nature, jump in the air, so, like, use hands to push off something, or... I guess it still sounds like acrobatics. <laughs> still acrobatics? Okay. Uh, let's do... Uh... We can I do, do appreciate your efforts to, to dress up acrobatics as other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's try... We can do... If I... Edgar, Edgar if, you, if you want to use your sleight of hand, your, your, you know, this dexterity of hand, this use of hand, you could use it to lasso a rope in a strategic place and help you to climb up. Okay, yeah, then uh, I will perform the I'll, I'll, like, start, like, pulling out some thorn whips, uh, like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you pull yourself up? Because usually the thorn, you sort of, if you grab something, you pull them to you. That's fine. But if you grab something that's stationary, can you yank yourself up? Absolutely. I don't see why not. Oh, yeah. Um, what was it? I was <laughs> that's reading, cool. I was reading something recently. I had I had an ability recently that I could do that. Like, you could pull something towards you and it said, but if it's a stationary object, you, you pull yourself towards it instead. That's cool. 
I love it. Yeah, it's like the it's like the mimic in the uh, the D and D movie trailer. It's like just like it hits with its tongue and then just pulls itself out. <laughs> it looks pretty good. Um, everyone, join us for Wild Beyond the Witchlight tomorrow as we start with a mimic fight. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Not um, definitely something. So Edgar, yes. Yes. So getting uh, the vines together and making my rope to pull along, I uh, got nineteen. Nice. Okay. Um, one of one of the worst checks, to be fair. But <laughs> yeah, nice phantom. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> nice little mimic come out there. Uh, so cute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and as you do that, Edgar, yes, you um, lash out your thorn whip. It catches around. What what are you lassoing here? Which, um, which god are you I... defiling in the name of your goddess? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Uh. I will. I will throw my, my thorn with uh, Bjorn. <laughs> Say! Yes! I'm not desecrating the gods. <laughs> You're desecrating okay. Bjorn instead, it's fine. It lashes around Bjorn's ankle, Bjorn. I can take it! Yeah, Bjorn holds on with all of his might, all of that athletic section before the inspired <laughs> athletics from Esmeralda as you are pulled whooshing through the air as Sporlax, like his little little campestry tail like flapping behind him. <laughs> it's like, Come on. That athletic checks, by the way, was a 32. It's a nat 20 plus 8 That's plus 4. Obscene. <laughs> and you're like, Bjorn, heads up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> he, he's still holding on to the statue with one arm and he's like, catches you and cradles you in one It's that one. fucking Captain America with the helicopter scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, thank you. So, Esmeralda. Can I sneak up on the crystal? For what end? <laughs> <laughs> it will never know I'm coming. That's true. <laughs> um, yes, you may, but I it's mean... unrelated to the skill challenge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this is mostly about sneaky fast guards and stuff, but you know, if you are you really a node of you know looking for things that are overhangs in the and like the route to get to the crystal or ways that you know might otherwise flee normally from sight, but also can flee from falling rocks. Mm-hmm. So which skill strike? Stealth. It's like your ability to judge the terrain around you with stealth. I think that would be insight and things like stealth. Stealth is like, okay. stealth is hiding from things that can perceive yeah. you. Mm. Okay, can I do is that the the investigation then? Yeah, absolutely. Does that work? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do investigation then. Twenty-five. Fantastic. Nice okay. Um. So yeah, you um you use your investigation to see the best route forward and to. Um, ascertain the rhythm of these falling rocks that does seem to be a certain pattern to it and you dash forward and you, as as predicted you see one of them start to dislodge and fall towards the section of the path that you need to take but you found a route that has that overhang so you just kind of dip underneath it and flatten yourself against the obsidian stone behind you as the block just comes whooshing past you know, just all your clothes and your sash and your hair is ruffled by the wind as it just goes thudding into the ground below you and then you swing out and up on to the ledge where Bjorn and Edgar are waiting as you arrive with six successes four, three failures and a successful skill challenge there you do find yourselves clambering up the last of the blocks and ledges onto that central pillar which none of the falling blocks are coming near and as you achieve that they do cease and stop and Take you that. find yourselves the four of you that's Ara just you know, acrobating her way through all of this and you find yourselves the four of you standing there and then there's a whoosh 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 as Craig just flies over and hands beside you <laughs> show off well, that was elaborate well done everyone <laughs> and um, the five of you stand there in a kind of semicircle facing this crystal. All of your faces bathed in the almost moonlit glow coming off the reflected surface. Edgar, Bjorn, you feel a strong pull towards this crystal. And you know that the spirit of one of the ladies of the Thanes, the Arch Fae, that are your goddesses in Barovia resides or is being imprisoned within 
this crystal that hangs before you. Edgar, you particularly notice something. There is a small pedestal at the foot of where the crystal hangs in the center of this column. And atop that is a carving. Symbols of the ladies of the faints of the forest, the swamp, and the mountain, stylized, ancient, surrounding an indentation in the center. An indentation that is the exact size of the bead that materialized on the necklace you wear around your neck once you purified the stone circle of the forest thing. Uh, oh, you can purify you? this. <laughs> it, I believe what I did like last time, man. Yeah, yeah. This might this might just work. And uh gonna pull out the bead for Thor's thing. Uh and place it amongst the carving. Okay. Jordan will put his beard up uh, there as well, so it's like two things. Power of two things. Ah. Here, let's let me grab this one as well. And he does, he's like kind of oh my he doesn't want to mess it up and but I'll place them both. I'm sorry, the, have... the the forest thing one and what sorry? Don't uh doesn't Bjorn have also um some sort of bead. It's his holy symbol. You right? have, that you, have you have a you have a necklace of reverence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll I'll hand over like the necklace so you can use that to channel the mountain fane's energy as well. Okay. Definitely. Good for the flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Bjorn kind of like ceremoniously almost like you know places this around Edgar's neck as he steps forward. You have this, Sand Horse. I mean, Edgar. You got this. <laughs> Sand Raccoon. <laughs> Sand Coon. And um, you... Let's see. Where is... Don't be the comment on the music, by the way. The music is slightly louder than the player slash DM. Thank you. We're just enjoying the epicness of the moment. Just a heads up. <laughs> Um, okay, so Bjorn, yes, you place the necklace of prayer beads of the ladies of the Thanes around Edgar's neck. And Edgar, you detach the bead that you received when you first visited the stone circle of the forest Thane. And you move forward and reach towards the pedestal. And you see, as you had suspected, the indentation in the center is just the right size. You look back to your friends and one by one, Esmeralda, Bjorn, Asara, and Krieg nod, encouraging you on. Please describe to me the kind of ceremonious way that you do this process, this this ultimate mm -hmm. religious rite, this releasing of the spirit of the forest thing. Uh, Edgar kind of <sighs> pats everything down and sits perfectly in place and starts to kind of breathe in to meditate. And, um, and Sporlax, uh, Sporlax knows, uh, typically knows, uh, 
when Edgar is meditating, that's usually for very serious moments. So Sporlax kind of, even himself, kind of gets in a meditative state. Uh, and so as he continues praying uh, for the forest, saying, please release your energy once again. And as he continues muttering those words, um, the prayer beads that Bjorn gave him will start to kind of like glow in ethereal green. And that starts to spread out to all the spores that start to whoop, kind of fade into little orbs of light, kind of floating around uh, that start to light up the room. And, uh, and once they kind of start swirling around, all the spores collect into this one ethereal glistening line that kind of go towards the shard to try and break it and release the lady of the thing of the forest thing okay the rest of you see edgar kneeling in this illuminated cloud of spores and lights from the beads of the necklace as he places the gem on the pedestal as he does so, it also starts to glow with that same green light and the crystal, the shard of the Shadowfell, turning slowly, starts to accelerate, spinning faster and faster. And all of you hear a crystalline shattering sound as first hairline cracks and then larger cracks start to spread across the surface of this Shadowfell crystal. And as it spins faster and faster, that same green light the light of the forest, the light of the arch fey trapped within starts to shine from the interior and explodes out. <laughs> Beams of the light just arching out to the side of the interior of the temple of the pyramid, illuminated by these spinning green strobes of fey energy. And with one final smash, the crystal just is destroyed. And there's a soft tinkling sound as all the pieces fall around the pedestal, around Edgar, who doesn't take any damage from that. Yeah. But the glistening, the Greek letter. The glistening no, yeah, green right. light that is left in the center of the crystal is just hovering there, amorphous, not taking any particular form. But then it whooshes down towards Edgar, entering into that bead that's on the pedestal illuminated from within with that same light and the spirit of the lady of the forest thane is yours to take back to barovia Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> everyone we we did it we, well done, we, 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 we can we, we can return is this oh one my. that feels like the win that's been so long <laughs> I, <laughs> whew, it's it's another big step, for sure. Okay, let's leave these Very people to one. their cataclysmic war and get the heck out of here. <laughs> you I look at um, one of the Bestetti and say, cataclysmic, cataclysmic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if only Belimba were here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She'd love it. She you would. Five. Carefully pick your way back across the space. Let's call it between. Back now. <laughs> yeah, it is the the blocks are no longer falling from the ceiling as this place has lost its purpose. And you clamber back towards the ledge on the far side, illuminated now without the need for spells or torches by this brightly glowing bead on the necklace that Edgar wears, and you emerge up from the staircase into the darkness of the Harakiran night and the cool sands beneath your feet are there as you see Benemba the Bastetti and the two keepers of the feather waiting for you to return. They escort you north from the bent pyramid although it can no longer be called that as you look back as you gain some distance you look back on it and you see, with all of that falling blocks and masonry inside, it is now flat on top. <laughs> so that's that's why it was bent before. Someone had clearly, probably when Strad went in there the first time. 
Um, <laughs> it was it was bent because of the loss of stone from the interior, and it has lost more now. <laughs> so, you make your way north, and before long, shining in the moon and starlight from the sky above, you see the wall of mist in front of you. Do you have a suitable token of Barovia? What is your mist talisman for your return journey? My mist talisman? Oh. How do those work again? <laughs> if, you, I... if you want to travel safely through the mists and definitely end up where you, want, you are aiming to go, you need a talisman that represents that domain of dread so that you arrive there safely. Can it be anything? If it's suitably connected to Barovia. I still have my... Um halberd that I used to use which is from Barovia I made it, or it was made in Barovia Okay. Um, I kind of like channel energy into the halberd and it like kind of acts as like a divining rod that leads us through the mist <laughs> <laughs> oh guys it's going this way now oh, it's going this way now <laughs> okay I just won't let John let the show be a drama. <laughs> it's just, no, it's okay. always going to be a comedy. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, like uh, like this, um, this, yeah, this, this beacon. Yeah, it does guide you. And um, as the keepers of the feather and Benemba wave you goodbye, what is the last thing you say as you glimpse this final view of Harakia? Oh. I. Disliked the heat, but the hospitality here has been splendid, <laughs> and we appreciate that. Oh, no. It is a great thing that you have started here. I thank you. Um, <laughs> Marin, does Esmeralda really want to say anything? Because Marin's going to say something stupid. <laughs> I think she probably will sort of kneel down next to Benemba and, and put a hand on her shoulder because she really wants to do scritchies, but she won't do the scritchies. She'll put a hand on her shoulder because she wants to feel good and fluffy anyway. Aww. But she'll <laughs> put it down in a way that's, you know, very comforting and like reassuring. And it's like, I have nothing but confidence that you can fail. Uh, be safe. You, you kind of glance over Benemba's shoulder. You can see in the distance Muhar burning on the edge of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Please don't burn to death. <laughs> a single tear leaves Bjorn's inky black socket and he just says is the tear also black uh i don't know i think that i think the tear ducts are normal <laughs> just the okay. sockets are just inky and black okay um a single tear leaves the socket and Bjorn just says in the wild crocodile <laughs> <laughs> a call back to a joke she wasn't there for and then he, <laughs> she starts to walk into the mist she's like i i'm not the soul pick <laughs> oh, okay. Catch you later. Ah, there they go. Yes, very good. Very good. <laughs> and so funny. She, she waves a little paw. Ah. And as you go into the mists, if you look over your shoulders, the last thing you see of Harakir before the mists of the Domains of Dread close around you entirely is the small glow of the jar of fireflies on her backpack. As it slowly disappears as the thickness of the mists surrounds you. The journey is long and fraught with night terrors and strange goings on just out of sight. Esmeralda, your connection to these mists and what lurks within them constantly pulls at you and whispers time, just <laughs> on the edge of hearing. But I'm very unhappy about this. Bjorn's talisman leads you true, and you appear where you left. Now, I'm trying to remember which which border did you leave from? Gosh. Was... Sorry, guys, I didn't, oh didn't preload this map, so sorry if it takes a second to uh, focus. Hmm. I, was trying uh, to I was trying to remember how you like. Did you go from the stone circle? That can't. I don't think you could have, right? I think. Did you go out past uh, where Death House had been? 
didn't we open yeah. a, a portal in one of the circles? Or sorry, uh, in one of the stones? Uh, no, that um, that allowed us to get the East Talisman to try. Right. Yeah, and your tokens, yeah. your tokens are at Sir Pool, so you must have traveled from the Stone Circle to there. Oh, okay. Sense. So I think yeah. I think you went past you yeah. went past the village of Barovia and out on that Svalik Road exit. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, because like the the encampment is near this uh, Sarah Falls, right? Yes. Yeah. That's okay, where yeah, that's yeah. where Madame Maver is. That's where you want to go back to. Yeah, that's where we came. And from. you start. Um, yes, you start to see the mists. There are shapes in the grey mists. Tall, looming, dark shapes that you see are pine trees. And there is a bite of cold air, but not dry, desert cold air. It is humid and with the scent of pine and the promise of snow on distant mountains as you arrive back on the borders of Barovia and soon find yourselves walking through the Svalik woods a few packs of wolves kind of tentatively come your way and they oh no fuck that and turn back and you walk you find yourself passing through the massive gates at the edge of Barovia as they open and close behind you without any one manning them and you emerge from the trees in to the open river valley at the far end of which on the western side you see clustered the village of Barovia once more and up above it, the pillar rock with the clawed turrets of Castle <laughs> um, Ravenloft. Count Strad von Zarevich's castle perched atop in silhouette against the night sky here in Barovia. And then you see something moving a large part of the tower rock moves shifting around as if a part of the castle itself is shifting and moving and a huge armored horned creature silhouetted against the night sky rears up against the full moon hanging in the air behind Castle Ravenloft and you see the burning eyes and impossibly huge gaping more of a Tarask oh, perched no. oh my god above <laughs> it's time the village of Barovia yes indeed folks Oh my God. Two charity streams ago, Bjorn promised if we reached a certain amount of donations, there would be a liaison, a liaising with the Tarask in his future. We have returned to Barovia, and we have returned to the domain of the Tarask. As you see, its massive claw break through one of the towers of Castle Ravenloft, which crumbles and ponderously oh falls, God. slamming into the village below. <laughs> Welcome back to Barovia. Ah! Join us welcome to the romancing <laughs> of the Tarask. <laughs> Yuri just looks at that thing and it's just like, I don't know, man, it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> he feels a tug in his heartstrings, he doesn't know why. <laughs> All right, my friends. Like that is, oh my God. Like, <laughs> is where we will rejoin next week. <laughs> So, everyone, please do join us next week oh as boy, our oh bold adventurers go up against a Tarask, and we shall see what happens. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure <laughs> it's fine. Will they survive long enough to return the spirit of the Forest Thane to Madame Ava? We shall see next time. Okay, that is all for today, my friends. Last chance you have to jump into the giveaway for today. Exclamation mark, enter for your chance to win Brotherhood of the Griffin, a fantastic adventure from CZRPG. And you can have your chance to end just a moment as we finish wrapping up here let us say you're very welcome malaki malaki um let's just say a goodbye to these fabulous adventurers first as the tarasque looms above them all 
Yes, nice we'll to meet you guys, I guess. Yes, <laughs> yes welcome. <laughs> Lots of first timers in chat here. Please give us a follow if you'd like. Thank you for the followers that have jumped in there. Uh, Tabletop Misfits, thank you for that follow there, the, the most recent one. Um, and if you would like to jump into our um, Discord, you can have the chance to vote on upcoming adventures and a chance to play as we sometimes have community one-shots with friends from the Discord. So um, please do. Oh, good luck, Tabletop Misfits, with the giveaway there. Um, everyone, please do jump into that Discord. Hugh, Hughes, Hughesless? Hughesless. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Um, everyone, yes, if you would like to jump into the Discord, there's the link there. Get all of the news first and foremost before it comes up anywhere else. Good luck, everyone, jumping in the giveaway, and we shall draw that in just a moment here. Adventurers, thank you so much. Esmeralda, before you are torn to pieces by a Tarasque, where can people find you on the material plane? Ah, uh, they can't find me anywhere. I have tried to hide on my socials. <laughs> Very fair. <laughs> but thank you so much. We'll see you. I next have like one. <laughs> yeah. Just follow Shed's lens instead. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, follow him. <laughs> We're basically the same person. <laughs> yes. Follow Phoenix Iwaki while you're at it, you know, just in case. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, here, here are all the various socials while we're at it. Okay, um, Bjorn, how about your good self? Um, did I make a command? I meant to make a command. <laughs> yeah, just follow me on Shed's nope. lens. I did not. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, Which... yeah, it's the same as my name on the chat. It's yeah. uh, Shez lens on <laughs> all socials, basically. Uh, yeah, I'm psyched for the next um, next camp or next session where <laughs> I have to justify why Bjorn is acting the way he will be acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, psyched for that. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, and I think, like our, our good friend Hans, the half elven, I need to I need to prep uh, careless whispers. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, Edgar, how about yourself? Uh, everyone, you can uh, find me in Florida, as I am Florida man, uh, or <laughs> uh, or here on Thursdays, mo Thursday mornings, my time technically. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are a Florida man, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I am all the Florida man, come on. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> wow. If you Google Florida man, you'll find a bunch of articles about him. Yeah. There, there's a They're all about him. He's very famous. <laughs> okay. Let's just chill out this dress for a moment so you can go on hiatus till next week, my friend. Okay. <laughs> now, we, yes, are Phoenix Iwaki, and we play lots and lots of D&D through the week, and we hope that you can join us again next time as we will be returning soon with Wild Beyond the Witchlight. <laughs> and tomorrow, Friday, is our sneak peek preview playthrough of Chacinta's Tyranny from CZRPG, their upcoming campaign. They called on the power of Umberly to help them in their task, but she demanded a rather steep cost that they were not ready to pay as she oh, no. dragged a bunch of fisherfolk from their town to their doom and the whole of the town is on high alert as tentacle kraken like tentacles rose from the lake and dragged these fisherfolk down into oh, the depths <laughs> now that will bring us into the weekend where we have the finale the grand finale of uh, the high seas our radiant citadel spelljammer crossover on saturday and before that friday night if you're in that part of the world saturday morning here you can join us for bookworm as we continue to delve into the shadow realm where that crystal came from as we learn more from the book of ebon tides from the fabulous cobalt press then sunday night monday morning we'll be back with the hunger of ethrin which is where that sound effect just came from just now and this music here is coming from, also from Rhino the Frost peaceful. Maiden, isn't it? Isn't it? False sense of security and all that. And I'm sure. <laughs> um, we'll be heading to the Hunger of Ithrin next time before swooping on round to Out of the Abyss and back here to wonderful, sleepy Barovia, being torn to pieces by the largest, most infamous, dangerous creature in all of D&D. Let us... I've, I'm so excited to do this. <laughs> I have never, it's never be used, very sweet. I've never even looked at the stat block of a dress yet. Oh <laughs> my god. Wait. god! Cannot wait. <laughs> we literally <laughs> do not. I hope there's have some kind of the... probia left over to save after we're done with the next week. Given like, how are you going to scale it down for level eleven? Because I'm pretty sure Taras uh... is like a level twenty beast. Um, here we go. I think it's higher than that. It's like CR thirty or something. It's CR thirty. Sure. It requires six level twenties to fight it appropriately. <laughs> Maybe it's like, you know, a Bjorn sized baby to ask. Um, Not a baby, that'd be kind of creepy. Oh, like, like, yes, we are on roll 20, yes. <laughs> um, here we are, folks. Let me just grab A young ourselves. 20 something to ask. 
<laughs> in the bloom of youth. Yeah, exactly. Um, they have a growth spurt in their 30s. It's very awkward. Just waiting, <laughs> just waiting for uh, the token to pop up here. It's the right riding height. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Oh god. Look at this big boy. Hello you. Let me show you this beautiful art, folks. Um players. Let me just hide the juicy gossip. Da -da -da -da. Everyone in that in jumped into that giveaway. It's gonna be drawn very soon. Oh my god. It's so big. <laughs> and so big. There we go. Um yes. That, let's let's say that's to scale in the map here of Barovia here. Oh my god. <laughs> As it clawed its way around the castle. <laughs> oh my god. And here's the full <laughs> here's the full art for you. Uh... <laughs> oh damn. Put on the charm, buddy. We're gonna need it. <laughs> Andrew, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, I think thank you. Her name is actually like Juliet or something. Mm. Cannot wait, cannot wait. It's so, Terra. It's uh, Terra Ask. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking Terra Ask. What am I thinking? <laughs> Terra. Beautiful Terra. Hey, girl, I need to Steve ask Lang you a Sack. question. <laughs> All right, friends, <laughs> let us wrap up there. Um, I am going to draw our lucky winner. Um, let's see who is the last person entered to make sure they are in the running properly. Da, 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 da. Malaki, malaki is in the last Unlucky. one there. Lucky. So I hope, <laughs> hope they, they just went lurking. I hope they didn't hear the name like, I won? No, <laughs> so no, just double checking you were in there. Okay, <laughs> so the entries are closed, my friends. Tonight's copy of Brotherhood of the Griffin from CZRPG goes to... Good luck. Da -da 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 -da. Good luck, everyone. Ah, sorry, I just missed it. Do join us next time, though. There's, we're giving away every, um, every session. Here it comes. Hey. Baron Dragonborn, Yay. Baron Ooh. Dragonborn, dear friends, who you can see here on the channel next week, as he will be joining us for a special Halloween-themed one-shot with the most Halloween-themed friend that we have, Darling Creepshow, who's joining us. Oh my goodness! For a one-shot, a spooky, spooky one-shot next Friday night, if you're that side of the world, or Saturday morning over here. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you, everyone. That is all for today. We will see you all again very, very soon. And I cannot wait for that. Thanks for... Um, I saw a couple people jump into the Discord. Thank you for that. Welcome in. Uh, we shall say a proper hello shortly. Although I might sleep first because it's getting on a bit. Sorry, you shares as well. <laughs> um, so let us head off for a raiding. Let's see who's on. See if any of our stream team friends are streaming. Everyone do stick around for that raid. Get yourself some Dream Pie channel points. You can help out our adventurers with inspiration crystals against the Tarasque next week. Um, none of the stream team are on at the moment, but the very talented art of Mike Disney, our friend from over on Lord Gosumba, is painting some beautiful miniatures. They're doing ogres for Dungeons & Dragons at the moment. Well, that sounds like fun. So let's go and hang out and say a big hello to the wonderful Mike Disney. Um, you know what it is, my friends. Stick around for the raid if you've got them. Let those phoenixes fly. But still next time, as we like to say around these parts. Oh, you see me this time. Of the many ancient civilizations of the world, none can surpass the grand majesty of ancient China. One of the oldest and longest lasting civilizations in the history of the world, going back over 4,000 years. Troller Games is proud to announce our latest Mythos series project, the Codex Sinarum. The Codex Sinarum covers the might and profound wonders of prehistoric to medieval China, both historic and mythic for castles and crusades. With almost 200 mythical Chinese creatures, and over 140 deities and heroes, the Codex Sinarum is filled with monsters, gods, warriors, and more on a level that will be truly legendary, told in a narrative true to Chinese history. It introduces the basics of Chinese martial arts and is complete with qi and the many legendary abilities associated with it. Ancient complex systems of sorcery, spellcraft, and fortune telling, even enchanted charms are explored as well. Players can live out their characters' adventures in tales set in popular Chinese fantasy styles like wuxia and more, while within a pseudo-historical setting and brought to life by the castle keeper or game master. 
researched and written by Brian Young, the wildly popular Mythos series delves into the mythos of the ancient world, bringing hosts of gods and heroes, legends and lore, and even the monsters and foes that plagued the peoples of ancient times to the stories that you create. The Codex Sonorum brings ancient China to your table. Join us and pledge today. Troll Lord Games, join the fray.